Brian Branch might play safety. I did. So that whole thing was kind of interesting talking about the, yeah. like how much that flexibility is there. I thought that whole I thing, because so that would change up the whole draft approach, right? Like that's how I was thinking about this. Yeah. No. Only why I say no is because like, uh, he's like, you bag those BPA no matter what. So I, I don't. True. But I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe later rounds for sure. The way I took it, I think. So remember during the 49ers game, they kept going like heavy personnel and then branch had like, leave the field so they didn't need the nickel. I think right. that's why they're, they're trying to get in the transition to safety a little bit more, just to keep them on the field more. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, and then I think always the same way as uh, uh, CD will have that versatility or ability to like drop down to a nickel. And then you can put iffy back at safety. I think right. that's how that's going to, that's going to work out. That, that was my takeaway from it. Yeah. No, I, th- I think that makes sense because it's almost like they were almost doing that at the beginning of the year. So it's almost yeah. just like going back to what they were trying to do. And then Dan Campbell told us they were like, all right, let's stop playing him at safety. Let's just let him be nickel. So it's almost like now we're going to try to expand it back out. I think that makes the most sense because like most teams aren't going to play, you know, that heavy, like you said, like, like San Fran would, but you do get times where that happens. So yeah, you never want to take branch off the field. So maybe yeah. it's just more of that. I, I don't want to like, cause to me, it's like, there's no reason I would as like my two, if they had three, sa- three receivers on the field, I would definitely not sacrifice iffy or branch on the field like i wouldn't make it an either or like they're both gonna be on the field based on last season i mean they'll have to prove it again but like i'm not taking one of those dudes off the field you know what i mean so yeah that's yeah, that's exactly. kind of what i took from it too uh, but if he is at safety i, I think meek probably would come in and play nickel because they, it sounds like they still want to grab a outside cornerback and i think they will i think we'll do that when both free and stand draft okay so do, where'd you take What's up, Chad? Chad, we see y'all, man. How y'all doing? Oh, yeah. My uh, we're bad. Back. Yeah, we just kind of No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. I was going to ask you another question, but before I do, y'all see the thumbnail? Shout out to Easy for that. See, this is the thing that we miss over here. Y'all get my thumbnails. They're boring. That's what. That's actually here. No, no, quick. No. Bam. Oh, dang. You just see my eye. <laughs> you're like you're like almost peeking in there. All right. That's actually kind of freaky. Hold on. Let's go back to this. Uh, I, The other question. So where did you... What part of it did you take that you think the Lions will take another outside corner? Like, was that a Brad Holmes thing or was that the Dan Campbell thing? So, uh, to be honest, I don't remember. I don't remember a specific part where they said it, but I just think it's just natural, like how everything's kind of fell into place. Like, I remember Brad Holmes talking about the pairs and like his exit interview. Like, oh, everybody wants to pair uh, this with with Aiden Hutchinson. Everyone wants to pair that with Aline McNeil. Well, he didn't use Aline McNeil as a, as a uh, example, but. That's kind of how this free agency's gone, right? If like they paired DJ Reader with uh with a lead. Yep. Hopefully, I mean I don't know what's gonna happen. I hope they grab somebody else or maybe even draft somebody else, but they paired Davenport with Hutch, which is the point yeah. that Holmes touched on a little bit today. And I think obviously Sutton and Carlton was supposed to be the pairing, but obviously no more Sutton. So I, I think that's the other piece to find. Because like at, at the time when they signed a meek, Sutton was here. And I, I was right. I mean I I'm, I guarantee you, yeah, they were gonna compete for sure. So, uh a meek. Meek for that nickel spot more so in my opinion, just because he's five eight, and I feel like Brad likes his cornerbacks longer. Yeah, I mean, and then and then the old, the guy that gets forgotten all this, and I understand is Mosley. Like, I still feel like if Mosley was healthy, he would have been our best corner last season. But yeah, so much I forgot, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's interesting too. Yeah, I honestly, because the cor- I'm sorry, the cornerback piece I grabbed, and I don't remember hearing, but I grabbed it from uh, Dan Miller tweeted out his takeaways from the presser is like. They're still in the market for cornerback, branch to safety, pretty much. Apologize. Mm. Okay. No, that's interesting because I, I, I do think that uh, I think the fact that because uh, you're you're right, the Amik Robertson thing was so wild. I think the fact that like the way that he explained how it actually still went down because after they acquired Carlton, they were like just not going to bring in Amik Robertson. So the fact that yeah. they ended up still getting him makes it seem like they weren't aware of the Cam Sutton thing. So they weren't like prepping for Cam Sutton by going out and getting a Meek Robertson. Yeah. But it also worked out perfectly because if they didn't get a Meek, now we'd be like really like, oh, yo, we really do need to earn corner. And, and now you look at free agency, it's like, what the heck's out there? So the fact that they brought him in, I, I do think that there's still flexibility. Like if you told me the Lions added no corners, which they won't, but if they added no corners, I think they could be fine at corner next season. I really do. Especially if Sutton comes back healthy. I'm not Sutton, but uh, Moses. Yeah. That's that's, that's a big one. It's really like, yeah. yeah, if you can return to, you know, form, I mean, bro, you got two, arguably two guys that, that be considered CB once. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. Okay, so, hey, easy. Like, let them know, because apparently I don't even know what's going on. Hey, let, let the chat know what we're doing tonight. And actually, I do have a question about it. So you let them know, and I'll see if you answer my question. 
All right, so I put it out on Twitter. Um, what, what we should do tonight? Should we do the one through thirty-two like we did last week? Do we just do all seven rounds, Lions mocks, or do we just come with our own Lions mocks and kind of dis- discuss them? And then Dion just went and did his own Lions mocks because you guys voted for the live <laughs> Lions mocks. Dang! Wait, was that even an option to do the mock before we got on stream? I think you set me up for failure there, Easy. I'm not gonna lie. No. I sent you the screenshot. Yeah, but Easy, you gotta understand, like the pixels and stuff. Like I couldn't really see it. So. <laughs> Oh, ah, dang, that does look kind of clear. I'm not going to lie. See, look, you set me up for failure. Oh, share a seven round Lions mock. Oh, no, 12%. no, no. That would have still been live. No, no, no. I was set up for failure, chat. We're going to do what both. Do you mean? Because well, sharing, well, okay. sharing is like coming to the table with one. Live. Oh, means we're doing it live. See, now I thought sharing meant we were going to go back and forth. No, it does. Is that, that one got that one got twelve percent? I don't know how to point on this. Okay, right, right. Okay, so wait. So today so we're gonna the, uh, the one that won was fifty one percent. No, I see that. I see that. I feel like I, I, the live is not clear enough. All caps doesn't do it for me. The, well, so that <laughs> <laughs> wait. So okay, the are, are we planning on doing this where like we each do one live? Is that what the plan is then, or uh, is that like what you were thinking? I don't. It don't matter to me. Honestly, this is like this is kind of like a first time doing this. This, this yeah. version of it. Yeah. Okay. So I, I guess what I think Chat, is you know what make the poll. Ah, oh, dang, you're right. I got to pull the back up. What they want. Ooh, okay. I will say this, chat. So here's what we do have. So like Easy said, I made two mock drafts, and I have them kind of just sitting here. We could just, uh, I mean, we don't have to go through both, but we could like pop it on the screen, bam, go through it. Then we go to Easy. Easy could do his mock. If y'all want to do that, we could do that one live. So is that what you're you were thinking too? Oh, well, I was thinking we could do we do both of them, I guess. We could do yours and then we could just do a live one. Okay. And a live one, is that together or is that like you just doing your live one? It's gonna end up being together. Right? Okay. I mean, I mean I'm just gonna <laughs> sit there and you're not gonna have no fun. Probably, bro. Yeah, Doug, maybe we alternate probably. picks or I'm down with that. I like that. Yeah. Let's do a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, man. All right, Chad, let's just do it then. Um, they don't have they don't have to do anything. Did you hear Brad Holmes press? I actually didn't, to be honest with you. I just read parts of it. I didn't even see it. I didn't know it yeah. came out until. I mean, yes. I don't think. I don't think either of us said that they have to do anything in the draft. I think we just what we predict is going to happen. I think yeah, you, sign you said what Dave Burkett said. Draft. Yeah, so Dave, Dave Burkett. Yeah, that's you. You oh, just oh, said oh, what Dave Burkett said. Miller. Yeah, yeah. Dan so Miller. Dan I'm Miller, sorry. Dan Miller. still in the market for a cornerback. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm. I'm just mixing because I think for sure. Although he's going BPA, it's, I think it's quite clear he likes some of these cornerbacks. He met with Kool Aid. He went to the pro yeah. day. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but he met with uh, Namaya, Namaya something, and then also uh, Maurice Norris Jr. from Fresno State. Mm, okay, well, th- okay, that would make sense. Mm, yeah, I haven't. I don't know who they are. I don't even know. I'm probably <laughs> picks, but yeah. Okay, but Brad's going BPA regardless. You know that. Yeah. I do agree with that, and that's why these drafts got kind of wild. All right, so last time we were on here, I was like, should we do no trades or trades? And you said, let's do trades. So my <laughs> one of my mocks got insane. Actually, it's my first mock. It went kind of crazy. So okay, I'll show <laughs> I'll show that one first. I, I don't want to spoil it all, though. I don't want to, like, pop it on the screen and spoil it. So I'm going to, like, zoom in, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll kind of, like, reveal it. It's loading, though, right now. And uh, I use PFF, so I'm assuming that's what we're going to use, too, here. All right, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I got PFF. All right, cool. All right, so um, I'll show mine. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So the reason why I say no trades. All right, I, I say this. No trades. You can trade. You can trade if you're doing the one to thirty-two because, like, you're. I don't. Know, these mock trades is weird. You know what I'm saying it's, it's, it's weird. Like, mock a trade unless it's like situation like this right now. Go ahead. I know you traded, so I'll stop. I'll back off. Oh no, I see what you're saying. We could do no trades. I think when we do it together, I think that makes sense. We'll get a mix. We'll get both. Okay. Too. Here's here's why I talked myself into being cool with doing trades is because I know the simulators there there's there's accuracy to them but I also know they'll be very inaccurate and then like you said trades are going yeah. to happen so I was just like I'm just gonna go after him but there's a dude I want I was like I'm just gonna go trade for him because you know how the simulator ranks guys so they're gonna go in similar spots until they update it so I'm just gonna go get the guy so that's kind of how I talked myself into it uh yeah this first one does go kind of crazy though all right let's do it dang hold up wrong button he lied. <laughs> Said we're doing Wait. it, and here we are not doing it. <laughs> okay, now we're doing it. All right, there we go. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go like this. Bam, that looks solid. That looks all right. Uh, you can see we, hey, you can see what we did easy. Like that? <laughs> we got that thing started off with the trade easy. 
Can I roll that down just a little bit? Oh. Bam. Boom. Oh, we'll trade it back. back. Trade it back, yeah. I think a lot of the talks about trading up. You know what I do think, though? And I think we'll see this when we do our mock. It feels like that mid-round, if they don't move out of the first pick and they do want to acquire a pick, like it feels like the mid-round is either that's like, yo, trade up with some of the late capital you got or drop out of 661 slash 73. They're so close together. Like that, you have such a gap there where it's like you could be really missing out on like a 100 picks straight. We've had it before, but uh, I, that feels like more of the area to kind of move into. But yeah, I started off with the trade out. Are you feeling a trade out? Like, are you are you upset about that? People in Detroit would be upset about it. People, Detroit Lions fans, attending the the, the draft in Detroit, probably be a little, will be a little bit upset. But mm. why do you think that is? They're they're there. The draft's here in Detroit. Oh, this is to, true. You, yeah, you don't get to be there for the ceremony. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. Your team doesn't draft somebody. But <laughs> that's true. But I I like this. I think that makes perfect sense because like that's. For how brilliant is that to just move back five spots and grab two more picks in the process? Bro, it's the same who, pool of players, too. And some people may be drafting off of like needs because I know Carolina's absolutely. right there in the second round. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you know, New England will trade back, number one. But also to what you just said here, like once you get to 29, if you don't move up, it would not shock me at all if the lines are sitting there like everybody here is a second round guy. Everybody here is a second round guy. Yes. So if we're cool with jumping back a few spots, we'll do it. That's why it made sense to me. All right. Yeah, and and yeah. I mean, if, if anybody deserves, if you want anybody with more ammo, it's Brad Holmes. You just gave him two more picks. Like that's that, facts. Give me that all day. Well, you're about to see a lot of picks flying around because with the first pick, and this is this was just like, hey, last time I took Kool Aid, I didn't want to go down that path again, and take the exact same players. So yeah. I just did the guy that I was debating with last time. I just took Darius Robinson. I I think a lot of people will be able to talk themselves into it. Like, hey, if you move back to round two and you got him, that's cool. I just I still love the player, man. And I and I've been struggling with this. I don't know how how you've been like with the top 50 players. I feel like I've watched most of the top 50 players now at this point. But like some of these dudes, like, for example, Mitchell um, is incredible. He ate up Kool-Aid. Like, I don't think Mitchell's incredible. I think he's one of the more clear cut. Like, yeah, he's going to be a really solid receiver at the top for me. So it really came down to me making a decision between Mitchell, which I don't think he was even available here. I didn't want to take Kool-Aid again. Darius Robinson just stuck out to me. So I just made the pick easy, man. Yeah, I I don't I don't hate it, especially as a second round pick. Like, it's weird because like we just kind of discussed it. Just it's just five picks away, but for some reason, man, I just I'm just not in love with Darius Rob Darius Robinson as like a first rounder. Um, okay, but if you're getting a second round, I don't. It just feels right, and it fits what they want to do. It, it feels like opposite of Hutch. Like, as yeah. much as we want a guy just to line up and go get him every single rep and, and just chase after the quarterback. They just clearly like a guy that is more versatile on the opposite side of us. They love a guy that can bounce around in and out. And I feel like Darius Robinson is that. So, Dude, I, I look at it like, yo, he could be the future with Pascal. If Kaminsky's last year, you could plug him in next year if you wanted that to be the future yeah. together. Like you said, we just watched Dan Campbell literally say that a big part of Davenport was the fact that he's going to collapse the pocket opposite of Hutch. That's how Darius is going to win. So it's like he's just moved to edge. I love the idea of it to everything that you said. I won't spend much time here. Darius Robinson, that was an easy one for me. I think I moved again. Though. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, I'm trying to take best player available easy. I got. I, got, I was planting okay. feet on the okay. ground. Jermaine Burton. Did. Yeah, yeah. Jermaine Burton, <laughs> yeah, round two, 61, fun. wide receiver. I'm not familiar with this game, to be honest with you. So you're going to yeah. have to sell me on this one. I can tell well, you I'm going to do – all right, well, I'll do my best for this one. So this this is where it's, this is where it's difficult for me is that Jermaine Jermaine Burton doesn't like fit, and I don't know if Josh is coming back or not. Jermaine doesn't fit into like the prototypical like oh, okay, if Josh's not here, just let me go get a six two receiver that's kind of lanky and can run fast. Like he's not that, so it's not as like seamless as you want it to be. But when I watched Jermaine Burton, I that continued to go through my head like yo, just take the best player available, and I was like, just get a dang weapon. I'm sitting here, and to me, Burton for their. Simulator was just sitting at the top. I've bounced around. I've watched so many darn receivers these last couple of days, and there's a lot of guys that I like. But to me, Burton and I, I have real issues with him. Like, like I have real issues with him, on, especially on like level one routes. Like, I don't think he gets as open as he should. His route tree is super limited, but the movement is so easy. And you see it a lot with like Roman Wilson, where they'll talk about like the speed and the movement. This guy's forty time. I don't even think he's better Roman Wilson, but he looks way faster than Roman Wilson when you watch him. It's like, it's like in a guy that's six foot. 
he plays with the competitiveness and just that that like aggression at the catch point that a dude that was six three would where there's certain guys that I just don't see that fire. I see it with Jermaine Burton. So I was like, yo, I'm just gonna take the player, forget the it has to be the perfect scheme fit and that kind of thing. Like this dude can open up every level, he has all the potential and what routes you could ask him to run. And to me, like he's like freaky fast, man. You just get him to football, he's he's dangerous immediately. But he brings the competitiveness at a little bit of a smaller stature, though he's not small. But he also gives last point I'll make is route strength. And I think guys that I've watched, there's a guy out of um Washington, um, McMillan, right? I like McMillan, he plays a lot in the slot. He doesn't bring anywhere near the route strength that Burton does. You may be looking at size, not thinking he has it, but he has it. So hopefully I talked you in a little bit there without spending too much time. No, I think uh, – I mean, the guy that I'm looking for is a guy that does similar things to uh, Josh Reynolds. I mean, like he said that in the route tree, and then just a piece that I just grabbed off the internet. Jermaine Burton is an explosive wide receiver who possesses excellent deep speed and route running ability to win at all three levels of the field, which is kind of what you said. I got no issue go. with Jermaine. Yeah, I got no issue. I, and plus, I don't even know who was there when you took him, so I, who am I to bitch? Yeah, I mean, I can show you guys at the end who was there, um, but, like, he was like – I don't know, bro. I didn't expect him to be there when I got there. So I was like, I was willing to move around clearly, but I didn't want to there. All right, we'll keep it going. Here's another trade. Um, what did I do here? Oh, I traded up. Back. Yeah. No, no, I traded back. You traded back. I traded back. Yeah. Little, 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 little day three pick. Hey, look, man, like you just said, you got to have all the options you can get. So I just want to add a little bit more to the For a six three. rounder. <laughs> For a six. That's and what then, that's what you gotta do. Or six gotta do Look, easy. This is like, bro. I'm t- when I'm sitting there, that gap is so daunting. I'm like, let me just acquire a little more. <laughs> let me just get a little more. What is? I mean, I guess. Was, was you Houston? Mean, Houston was a six rounder, right? Yeah, he was a uh, two eight. Wait, no, one eight, one eighty one or something. He was. I, he was far out there. <laughs> I just Malcolm was there. back there. I think Malcolm, Mal- Malcolm was one eighty one. Mitchell was one seventy seven. I think Houston was too. We'll see what you cook up. We'll, we'll see what you get in the sixth round. Okay. Uh, do you know players are going to be in the sixth round of this draft? I mean, why are you grabbing so many sixth round picks? No, I actually do. Like, they like, and picks. it's they weird because picks. no, but there's it's it's weird because like there's certain positions that I know nothing. Like running back, I almost know absolutely nobody in the draft. But like, there's certain players that I do know late because I've I've looked for them to create a mock draft. And my first mock draft that I made was yesterday for the Lions this year. So I felt pretty prepared, man. I felt good about this one. Uh, and. I don't know. Like at this, to me, this pick fell right into the category yeah, of what you said before we started. And all right, tell yeah, us that, yeah, PFF. Sorry, look, man. No, it's all right. Me and me and PFF, we've had issues over the past. We we fought a few times, but Jermaine Burton is slow. Billy, you need to stop. Billy, he's not Billy. They call We're me gonna have Billy. <laughs> Billy, he ain't slow though. DJ Khaled, all right, I apologize. <laughs> uh, no, um. Uh, Shoot, I oh, I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, this is this is to me like right where you said like just take best player available, don't worry about position, that kind of thing. That's what Kalen Bullock has kind of become for me. And then also when you hear like the whole Brian Branch thing and how much they like enjoy the flexibility of players and they haven't really added safety depth yet. I know they will, I'm sure. And there's still so many guys out there. But like this is the type of dude, size, weight, speed, like you're going to get a lot of hit and miss, it feels like. But at the same time, the ball skills are all there. So you'll you'll see that. Like, he'll make some awesome plays. And to me, what I like most is the flexibility is so natural. There's so many safeties where, like, he could pop. He could go down the slot, cover a guy, but he's not very good at it. Like, this is not the case. Bullock could legit probably play corner. I think he has the traits to play cornerback if you want wow. him to. So you'll have to figure it all out. But I think it's in a perfect spot where, kind of like offensive line, I think it's an overlooked position where the Lions could say, let's go get a big-time athlete that has all the traits and just plug him in there and figure out where he plays. But we have starters. We don't need him to start right now. Safety feels like that's the spot where you can kind of go flexible with that option. And, uh, I, you know, I like a big-time athlete. So, Caleb. Yeah, I did a little bit of homework. Um, I love size. I, I, you're always going to win me over size at the safety position, especially because, yeah. like, we. I think we had this discussion, too. It's easy to fall in love with size in the secondary in general. I always do it with uh, my, my cornerbacks. But, like, the thing with cornerbacks, sometimes you have to sacrifice like the mobility there, like the, the quickness and speed when you go like bigger guys. As safety, that's not as much of importance because he, he's kind of reading the field and you know making his decisions beforehand and, and getting where he needs right. to go. So, and that and that way he gets there quicker because he's be able to fix up lack of the, the burst or quickness. So I I, uh, I like this I like this guy a lot to be honest with you. I think he has like long ass arms too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'd have to. F- I had to find my exact notes. I can get those at the end, but yeah, so that's all it was. Just take a best player available. And now I think this is where we have a gap, but I think I addressed that. I don't think I just let that slide. Oh, no, I no, and, not a gap yet. Okay, go ahead. 
No, I mean, like Dan Campbell said too, I know you heard it, you want some competition in that safety room. And I think the one piece that we don't have backed up to if he did go down, the knockout would obviously. But Kirby, I don't, I don't think we have a guy to mimic what Kirby does in that backfield. And I feel like that's what this guy could be. Yeah. No, I that's that's the thing. That's the thing that stuck out to me is that I just feel like in this defense, they ask all their safeties to not only like, okay, you have to play single high and then come into the box, but and, and that needs probably some work, but it's just like you're gonna have to go down and cover because we like to blitz, we like to we like to bring pressure, we like to play man, and now they're bringing in corners that they feel like are gonna do that. So it's like from a long term side of things, like I want a guy that has that flexibility, and I just don't feel like there's a lot of guys with easy flexibility to do that from safety. So I I, I went for it. Uh, also, I made you a fan of Carter. All right, Charles. Hey, that's one. I'll take it. You know, if he's gonna start, if he's my starter, look. Hey, I think y'all should check out Dan Campbell's presser today because one thing that he said that stuck to me easy, and I don't know if it. You, yeah. you noticed it either, but when he said that, like, there's a lot of draft picks that could be drafted that aren't going to start this year, and I think that's okay. Like, yeah. I think in the past they were forced to, and it, great job by Brad. Some guys just took over spots, and like, oh, that's awesome, like Brian Branch last year. But, like, naturally, your round three picks are usually not starting your one. They're, they might have a little bit of a role, but they're not starting. So I'm absolutely okay with him just kind of figuring it out as he goes with the safety room. Um, we could use it. All right. Yeah, I, I yeah. Like I said, I, I feel like you got like it, guys that go down this defense outside of Hutchinson, who's kind of like irreplaceable. Like I don't have anybody who can match what he does. But it's feel like they have a like even with the, the Ifonte or um, CJGJ last year, Brian Branch was like the CJGJ junior could like fill that role and do it. And I, that's the way I feel about. I said it earlier, Caleb Bullock and uh, Kirby. And like you said, too, he's got the first till he bounced maybe into like a nickel or even outside corner. He's long enough to play so. I, they hey, can honestly mold this kid to whatever they wanted to, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, we're we're on the same page with this one. I, I love that. Now, and my man says it's, be, it's best player available, in my opinion, from what I've seen so far. That's that's all I can do with that. Um, no, Caleb Bullock is – I like him a lot. See, look, in that D grade, that's what I'm trying to say, Easy. That's the worst grade they've given me. They gave me a D for that. That's we're crazy. trusting Easy's grades. That's why he's here. You give me, Hey, grade the pick. Grade the, grade the pick grade so the pick? far. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, grade the pick just, so far. Just uh, make it feel better. Yeah. Uh, I'm just closing my eyes, so no bias. <laughs> what pick? <laughs> 70? What, what number know, was that? Oh, that pick? That was 77, Six, yeah. 77? I'm going to give yeah, that a, yeah. I'm gonna give it a B. Yeah. I want to say A, but they got it as a D, so it's something they don't like about it. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, uh, anyone have any advice for the draft planning on coming down day one? All right. Um, haven't found much info. I, I, I just want to throw this in here just because I know this will be a lot of people asking just real quick. No, yeah. this is... My advice for the draft, you're saying, day one, my little girl's birthday, so I'm hoping to make a good experience. I would say if you plan on seeing it in person, get there very early. <laughs> get there very early. Otherwise, I would say, like, post up and find, like, a good spot to be, like, maybe be in the environment, maybe close enough where you can pop down. I would I would absolutely go to – I would be around. That way, after the draft, I could go to whatever show they're doing, especially if it's for a birthday. That way, they can kind of be in that environment. But before that starts at night, after the day ends – I would, I would almost like, I think in a lot of ways, if you're not just going to want to stand there all day long, like try to find a spot that's just near it. They're going to probably be TVs everywhere and just like chill out and watch the draft. Like I, that's kind of how I would go about it, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know. That's, that's all, that would be my advice there because it's, it's going to get messy. All right. Uh, this one, I, I, this was the one guy I kind of carried over and this was uh, Dwayne Carter. Let me get this off the screen. This is, uh, I took him in my, my mock draft I did yesterday, but okay. this, Yo, this one, like, I, I do need to watch more. I'll be fair. I do need to watch more of this player. But, like, you know you know those dudes when you see them and you're like, dang, that guy kind of looks awesome. And he, I feel like you get the sense that he'd fit, that the Lions would be on board with that. That's what yeah. Dwayne Carter kind of gives me. Like, it would be like, uh, first off, anybody that we could add. I, be, I like where we have a lead, but I think Brad, he's not going to play the Broderick Martin role. But it's like if I could put someone behind a lean that really has pass rush upside as a big 300-plus pound defense vomit, good length, um, I think that there's more scheme flexibility with him than a lot of interior defensive linemen. But I also think he brings immediate, like, as a plus pass rusher. I love the energy that he plays with as a run defender, too. So I, I just think that he's one of the defensive linemen that kind of stick out. It's like he could really fit here. And especially if he wanted to put on a little bit more weight, it might fit even better. Yeah, because I, what I remember about him, he's got, like, he's got some pretty long arms, if I'm not mistaken. 33 inches. That's solid. That's real solid in the interior. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got to be honest. I probably have to get on the film with him a little bit more than just like the highlight tape that I, I remember watching. But I think he's definitely like a rotational piece. Now, now you say you think he'll rotation in for a lean. I can, I can see that actually with yeah. the arms. Yeah. yeah Cause I, I, 
I know I think Aleem's extension's coming, but like, and I hope for Levi, man, I think he showed flashes last year, but like to it's just like we don't really know what that's gonna turn into. And I just still know that even with DJ Reader, if I was to lose and Lee McNeil for a game, I still wouldn't really trust any pressure presence in the interior. Like DJ Reader will give it to you as a nose tackle, but it's not yeah. pause on that, but it's not like the same. It's definitely not the same, especially one on one. So this guy will go win a one on one. And you know what, too? He's actually got like some solid numbers that I'm looking at right now, too, like to getting to the quarterback, which would fit yeah. the Leem's role in this defensive line. So, and that's the same thing like I said, too. Like, if, if, if we're grabbing a guy who's going to back up or not start right away, let him at least be like a rotational piece similar to what, who's starting in front of him. Obviously, this guy feels like a guy who could rush from the interior with his long ass arms, also get his arms in the air, bat some balls down, maybe two, five and a half yeah. sacks in 22, just one last year. But regardless, he's shown that he could do it because it's four and a half the year prior. What pick is this? This is 103. And, yes, shout out to Ryan. I think he was a three-time captain at Duke, so that has something to do with it, too. Okay. How old is he? Oh, actually, I don't know that on top of my 24? Head. Older? Mm, that's a good question. I don't know on top of my head, to be honest with you. And also, at this point in the draft, are you being that picky with how old your prospects are? I don't think yeah. so. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh all right, we'll keep it moving. Uh, that we can get some bars here. I'll give Ooh, it a C okay. plus. How's that? I'll give you B. I'll give you B. No, that's all right. It's all right. We'll just run the show without him. That's cool, chat. Uh, well, let's see what the next mock draft we got. We got Cannon. <laughs> I'll give it a B. I'll give it a B. <laughs> no, no, I'll take the C plus. Does no, remember that? I think the C plus. Yeah, fine. Listen, I don't listen. To be fair, I haven't watched this guy. I'll set up a couple highlights. I'll do it right now. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll ride with. All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, let's go. Okay. I don't know how I – wait, how did I acquire this pick? Time out. 123. Hold up. I had to make a trade somewhere in here to acquire this pick. Uh, I think you got that with – Oh, here uh, we go. Patriots. Here we go. It's, oh, it's below it. It's below it. I didn't know it. You and these damn oh, six-round picks. Come on, man. You got to use the six-round pick. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. No, I received a seventh-round pick. You're easy. But that six-round pick's that value. Oh, yeah. You Throw him a six-round. Okay. All right. There we go. All Moved right. up 14 spots. I feel good about it. And we're taking my man that I cannot pronounce. I had no chance I'm pronouncing dude's name. But I think he's best at a guard. And this was one of the first players that I had went through for an offensive lineman out of Utah. I love the power traits as well that he brings. And I, and I think he brings flexibility. Like, there's a lot of dudes where they're, like, kind of one or the other. Where it's like, you know, he'd be good in this offense, but he wouldn't be getting anything in this offense. And it's like, ah, oh, this won't be good. But And it's just like, this is what the Lions need because you always touch on it. It's like, when you talk about how much flexibility you have to have on the Lions offensive line, it's, it's a lot. And I think that he has enough athletic traits on both sides where he could fit into a lot of different schemes. It's just going to really need time. But I think his build fits a lot better for guard. So I would just pop him into guard. And it, like I said, this was a guy that I was like, I was I was on board with this dude real early. And uh, I haven't hit guard yet. So this one, this one to me stands out. I think he's a really good fit for us. Um. Also, can you pronounce it? his name for everybody? Just real quick. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I just want to move. Yeah. Uh, Satoa. Lamoa, Lamia, Lamua. Satawa. That actually sounds kind of good. I like that. Satawa. Satawa. That might be it. Lamoa. I don't I don't know. Lamoa. I don't know. That might be accurate. Yeah. Let okay. Me, let me see some real quick. Hold on. I'm gonna tell you. I gotta look at Google machine. I was about to say this one of those dudes. Yeah, tell name real quick. I'm on a different tab. All right, I got you. S A T A O A. That's kind of fired. There's no way anyone else matches that name, so we're gonna type in the first name. No, nah, shot, shot. They have one six way, four, one three way. nineteen. I'm trying to find my notes for him. He definitely has the arms of a guard, thirty-two inches. There you go. I will find my notes one day, Chad. All right. Satoa Lemua Lemay. Oh, okay. Satoa Lemay. That's it for sure. Lemay. Now that's money. Satoa See, Lemay. now I like him even more. All right. Satoa LeMay is an, an an, is an experienced and versatile offensive lineman who offers a strength and foot quickness to develop into a quality starting NFL guard. Listen, mm. if you're having a guy that could possibly start at guard, round, round four. four, I can't hey. hate on you. What happened to our last round four guard? Logan Stenberg, dog. I don't know if that was our last one, but yeah, right, relax. That's not a great, that was a great example. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I probably you did not do yourself any favors with that one. <laughs> hey, real quick, Dwayne Carter, though. Reverend I have Ford. his com <laughs> Okay. Sorry. I have his combine chat. Yeah, you good. You good. You excited. So I also bet on it. Wow. Oh, that's why you're excited because you bet on it? Now, if if I'm sorry. 
I, I apologize. This is a very important game for the Ravens right now. Why? What so they're, they're pretty, so they're they're like basically heads up with this uh, this team for the wild card spot right now. So oh, two, so two they're near and head on the playoffs. Team. Yeah. So if this team beats us tonight, we're tied for that wild card spot, and there's only 11 games left. So the Ravens should win this oh. game and be up four points on them. Okay. And I also bet on a Patrick and goal, I'm pretty sure, which was probably stupid on my part. Maybe I shouldn't cash out. All right. So Tua, oh, so Tua let me let I got me my goal. notes. I found him. Hey, you, real quick, though. So does hockey go by points? Is that how they set up standings? Yeah. Or is it like? Yep. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I don't know why, but I think it's I think it's good for them from what I remember. Yeah. Okay. Well, he, here, here's my notes, Chad. So this is why I said I think it's going to need time. I had him below average in, in pass protection. Same thing with footwork as well. I really liked him as a as a run blocker. You know, just by what I'm looking at here. Uh, you know, angles that he takes in the point of attack. Like I said, I think he brings flexibility is there. And then I have plus grades as just a mover and in his ability to anchor. So I think those two things. I mean, those two things are necessary at guard. I thought his footwork was just sloppy at tackle, like you said. Uh, I think he was. I, I don't know what he's listed at 33 inch arms, but I haven't wrote down with. I don't know if that's accurate or not. But you know, to me, like the second level ability was one of the highest spots that I gave him. So, and I think that's just key for guard guys that can get up to the second level zone and uh, as a polar. So yeah, just kind of needs to all fill out, get cleaned up, but I'm at round four, like dude with offensive line, you're not, you're not getting a starter there and I'm okay with that. We don't need to start there. So I went upside. I mean, shit, the thing I read just said he could start there hey, down honest, the road. Now I'm on board with that. Yeah. And be, be honest with you too. I mean, we've, we've thrown fucking anyone in there. Four, and it's kind of worked out. I mean, in the this NFC Championship game, we had AOD in there, so it's like put him yeah, with Hank Farley, probably, baby. Yeah, I'm here with it. And you said yeah, he gets the second level. Well, he already mm-hmm. kind of said it, but I'm assuming he pulls well then too. He's just moving. Yeah, that's my highest grade is what he did up to, uh, up to the second level. Smooth transitions, great acceleration on sweeps. So, all right, uh, probably a couple left here. Oh yeah, okay. I forgot I made this pick. I forgot I did this. Jaheim Bell. Uh, now look, he says tight end. I'm not even drafting him as a tight end. I'm gonna be honest. He can play tight end. If you... All right, look, look. If 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 we want to take him and say like, all right, you're like tight end four. So if we go to a situation where we have injuries and we have to do that instead of like last year where we're signing just tight ends like Zach Ertz, that's fine with me. All right, I'm on board with that. He does not have the build of an inline tight end at all. He's like short. He looks weird. He looks like a running back. Why? Because, and this is a guy I had a lot of experience with South Carolina, transferred to Florida State with South Carolina. He was playing running back, but he was listed as a tight end. So we always had to mark him in. It was always weird because he was playing tight end. But I, this is where I think when we're getting to round five here, what do we know that the Lions value? And what have we just found out about the NFL? New kickoff rule changes, right? Special teams value is even more important mm. now. I think he. Elite special teams player. So there's that aspect too. I think he'd be a big time fullback. That's where I'm looking at him. We don't have a fullback right now. And I'm not saying that every team's going to value that. Most teams don't, but the Lions show that they will. And I think we have guys that could do it, right? We saw Mug Rodriguez do it. I'm making him fullback. Receiving ability, very natural as a runner. So you can get a little bit more creative with Ben Johnson with it. But mainly, man, it's his blocking. He doesn't have the strength to be in line, but you can get him up up to the second level. He's so comfortable there. And uh, he plays with good effort on screen. So he blocks like he's like there are plays where he's running by guys as a receiver and he's a tight end. That's like 245, six foot one, six foot two. Like it doesn't look right. He looks he's really strong for, for a tight end. Like yeah, skinny. he doesn't. He's not an after tight end at all. So I think he's a good blocker, though, blocking. at that size. I think I think he's a good move blocker. I don't think he's got the build to like step inside and just kind of play on the line. So you'd have to get a little creative. But as a fullback, like I don't need that. You know what I mean? Like as a fullback, I'm just gonna just lead the way for me, and he's gonna do that. I think yeah. better than most fullbacks. So I think he's a. And look, I'll ask you this, easy. I'm not saying he's gonna do this, but if Kyle yeah. Uzcheck was available in the fifth round, would 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 anybody take him? Yeah. No. They, they, the the Lions deployed fullbacks we've literally when Kabina went down we moved our linebacker into that fullback position it's obviously on the value and if this guy can catch I mean he's nice with the hands is he quick I mean, oh yeah I mean I mean he went from he went from playing you know running back to slot route receiver basically last season he's listed as tight end but he aligned mostly at slot so he's like <laughs> I mean I don't love his route running but it's like yo okay this is gonna work the one other question I guess I'd ask is is he physical like a bender because I remember specifically Shout out to Corey so. Woods asking this question. If you had to pick one guy in this team to, to go out and, and bite a kneecap, Dan Campbell picked out Jason Gabenda as like the toughest guy on the team. Dang. Yeah, so there's a the match that to wire different. I see him out like aggressive like that too. He was. He was. I, w- I would say player. 
I would say in fairness, no, because I feel like Cabinda was wired different. Like, bro, that dude just during hard knocks was like, you know, just him shaking his head. Look a little scary. Dude's intimidating. He was, yeah, he was scaring people in the in that room. <laughs> yeah. So I, I won't give him that, but I, I love the energy he plays with. So I'm I'm cool with making it work there. Um, all right, we'll keep it moving. Couple left here. So that was the trade. So I ended up. I traded up for this pick too. Yeah, I said we we're going crazy. Um, I don't know it's necessary because I only went from I only went up five spots, but I wasn't gonna lose him. Take my seventh round pick, 249. I, I don't need it anyway. That's fine. You take it, we'll keep it moving. All right. Oh my goodness, another trade. Yo, I'm telling you, this one went off the rails a little bit, but we're all right. Uh <laughs> hey, at hey, least look, you're look. utilizing some of these six round picks. All right, I'll that's take what it. I'm saying. Look, here's the reality, Chad. Uh, the board's not going to go the way the PFF board has it laid out. So my thing is like, okay, if I don't have to move up five spots, take him fine. The lines have a better sense than that than I do. But PFF's going to take him. Like it, 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 the fact that they're going to take my dude, so I'm just going to go get him. I don't care that there's a trade attached to it. Kamal Hayden, I think I'm saying his name right. Recently, someone that I was like, oh, who the heck is this guy? Uh, I don't think PFF's on him yet for whatever reason. I think they're sleeping. He's a wide corner guy. A lot of guys like Xavier Leggett. Like you do easy. I thought he played a really strong game oh, against David Leggett. Not perfect. He got beat a couple times, but I thought he battled in that game. He showed his off coverage ability, which is to me his biggest strength. Um, and then he shows also really nice ball skills as well. Like he's a very uh, confident and he's got a lot of anticipation to his game, but he's also got the build to play wide corner. I think there might be some speed concerns, um, but I think when you get this late to the draft, I, I think what he's already got like translatable skills in certain ways to the NFL. Some he may have a little bit of a tap ceiling, but I'm okay with that at round five. I'll put him in the mix there at corner. And again, play play on uh, special teams for me. I am unfamiliar with this game. I can't even give yeah. you a grade, but they gave you a, what, a C, it's like a, a C B. plus. Yeah, C I mean plus. They, they give me a little. There's a little bit of green in there, so I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, my I got. Bad. Uh, no, you good. You good. Okay, uh, we made another trade. All right. No, this is the last one. This is the last pick. This is the last pick. I tra- Look, but easy. Look, now you got to understand. You got to understand. Why would I they sit there? They traded a lot last year. Okay, see? We've seen it. So if I'm at 244 and 247, right, I'm going to take both of those. Bam, let me go to 215. And I'm going to be honest. When I traded up, I had no idea who was on the board. I'm going to be honest with you. Straight up, I traded up. I was like, I don't know who's on the board, but I just want to move up a little bit higher. And when I got there, I was like, this dude's available. Let me take him. All right, you want to talk about? Lighten up the combine. Yeah, yeah. You got to fix that, fam. Hello, hello. There you go. I talk about lighten up the combine. He did that. Now, I think he needs a lot of work in a lot of ways, but there is guard flexibility. He's played a lot of guard. You know, uh, if you go back to this, actually, take that back. I don't think he's played any guard. Hold up. I have to go to my notes. I actually don't think he's played any guard. I said that out loud. I was like, that ain't true. You, yeah, oh, what a liar, dude. I think, over, I think over the last two seasons, he's played like no guard, actually. Hold up. You disgust me. Yeah, <laughs> that was bad, chat. I'm sorry. That was bad. Uh, let me let me double check. No, no, it's good. I deserved that because that was. No, nah, I really, I don't, I don't know. Oh dang, I got a lot of. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. Anyway, if he plays center, him. he can play guard. Like, there's a reason why coming out of the draft, him. a lot of these guys are like docked as like a IOL, meaning interior offensive lineman. He could sure. probably fucking be moved over to any of those three spots. I'm assuming. Now, obviously, first year probably ain't gonna be the prettiest example of it if it's his first year moving to that spot, but. Going forward, I'm just pretty damn sure he'll get it down right. I mean, we've seen this with Evan Brown. We've seen it with Frank Rag now. we see it with tons of guys in this league who used to play center and move the guard, and it's kind of worked out. That's why they're scouted as to your offensive lineman. See, that's a great point, but I will say he did play guard. All right, take it back. He did play guard. So last yes. season, 12 games started at center, but the year before he played guard, left guard, and, right guard, left guard, and center. But like I said, combined, 21 bench first reps, 32 and a half inch vertical. He ran a sub four. He ran a sub five second 40 yard dash. He also improved his bench press reps, which like Cody White here coming out was really low. There's concerns. This guy improved a big time. And if you pop in 27, you know, that that helps you a ton. I think moving to guard. He's also got the build six foot four, uh, 300 plus pounds, still in a little bit on the lighter side there. But I think that that brings fine length. Like there's there was issues that I really had within this game. And I didn't grade him like big time in any category necessarily. I didn't think there was many traits that really stood out but there's uh there's an anchor ability you'll see it like as soon as he gets into contact he starts to get real wide and he sits himself down and he's also got some of the reactive athleticism i i think there's a lot of like little things where like yo that made it look terrible 
But if we could dial that in, it'll look a lot better. Like there's a lot of those like little things, especially as a run blocker that pop up when I watch him. Same thing with control. Like you'll see him stumble a lot and then you're like, wow, look at him recover. And other times he's like, wait, why is he stumbling there? He shouldn't be stumbling in this spot. So I feel like there's a lot of that with him. But overall, <laughs> yo, no. Look, I have to do this, Easy. But look at this, Easy. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Well, someone said, you, someone said you study. I was like, because he's a nerd. Well, all right. Well, let's call out Zach Zachary Applebaum here. Oh wow, <laughs> Zachary's being a hater, so I got to break it down a little bit. What's you know he say? I mean? can, can I hear you say that word? I've never heard you say I mean, that word before. Uh, sorry, Dose. That's what he said. Oh, okay. I think he actually loved it. I think he just mistyped here. I think that's what that was. It, it's cool. I get it. It's, you got the. Um, that's actually that actually means great in Italian. Dog dog shit day. Dog shit day. <laughs> <laughs> Go shit day. I'll take that. I appreciate you. Yeah. Shout out to Zachary, man. Walk the street. Uh, Dog shit day. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> you know, that support my draft. Appreciate Merci you. Merci beaucoup. Dog shit day. That's all I took. No, no, that's good. That's good. I, took good I, took I needed that because now I can really yeah, like great. understand what you. Oh, you did? Yeah. I took French too for like. Yeah. We didn't get to Jean, that part. Jean Pierre, you're speaking to. Just let me know. Yeah, I I probably could tell you like two numbers. We did a lot of movie watching. All right. Yeah. What a lazy <laughs> ass teacher. You know they do a lot of movie watching. Actually, I think I had the last year, and then they like they just cut the class. So you know. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, this, yeah. Go ahead. To be fair, uh, to uh, Doc Chute, every if you do a mock the way Brad truly drafts, everyone's gonna say it's Doc Chute, just because like. <laughs> He drafts BPA, and like if you're gonna put yourself in that mindset, you're gonna you're not gonna take the needs. Like it's so easy for like us to sit here and be like, oh, we need a cornerback, grab the cornerback. Oh, with like another defensive end, grab the defensive. End. Like it's easy to grab that and grab the sexy names, but like truly, how how Brad does it, bro? It's just straight. What are you, are you doing the draft right now? It's straight. No, uh, it's straight BPA, and that's why we find ourselves scratching our heads so often when he makes these we drafts. Because we're like, what do you what do we do that for? So like that's like. Yeah, you, you get the dog shit day grade from like a lot of the fans, but that's what Brad got last year from everybody. And guess what ended up happening? Fucking knocked it out of the park. Yeah, he just grabs the best player afterwards too. Dang, yeah. Now see, now see, I appreciate that. But no, that is, that is true because um, like if we would have done a mock draft and I would have taken Levi and then came back and took Lee McNeil, you'd have been like, "Yo, what are you doing?" <laughs> like we yeah. were all, I, I remember sitting there like, "What are we? What are we doing?" But it turned out. I mean, we'll see on the Levi one, but the Lee McNeil one made a ton of sense. And at the time, you'd be like, why would I draft another DT? I just won't take one. I already got one. But right. they had a plan for it. They had a vision. And I didn't see it at all. Same thing with Jack last year. They had a vision. I didn't see it at all. So I'm with it. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Chat. All right, Chat. Give us, give me some grades, man. What do you guys grade the mock draft? Um, does no it, is that what it is? Or is it uh, a little bit worse me, than that? Let me see it one more time. There you go. <laughs> let me, oh, you want to see the mock again? No, no. Oh, yeah, I do want to see the mock again. So there you go. From that what you're talking about? All right. There you go. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I don't know this guy. He had long arms, didn't he? Lamoa? Cool. Lamea? Or 32 and a half? Hey. No, 32. Yeah. I'll go see. Uh, 33 inches I had him listed with. I'll go. I'll stick with the C minus on, on the on the tight end, but I haven't watched the film. All right, <laughs> yeah, I'm wrong with that. And I'll just stick with. I, I'll actually I'll just stick with the grades the rest of the way through. How about that? I I I, I'm, I rock with it. Look, chat. I only draft the dudes that I've seen play. So to just be fair, um, there you go. All right, we'll move on. So <laughs> I did make a second one. We don't have to go through that though. Let's go. Let's do our mock draft. I, I can show it at the end, but let's do our mock draft. So we're doing right. this together, or this is you holding it down. I'm down for either. I'll, I'll I'll come to you for input. How about that? Okay, okay, I'm on board with that. All right, now we're gonna have to. Uh, and you're Chat. not making trades, or you are making trades? Uh, I'll try to make some trades. Hmm, okay, the one that say you can't make trades. All right. Well, you All did right. trades. What are you gonna now? Well, yeah, but trades? I didn't know. Look, easy, right. hey, easy. I wasn't. A, I wasn't aware <laughs> of the circumstance. <laughs> uh, well, you no, made you, you made. made trades outside of the fact you made seven of them but they're reasonable trades they're like i didn't i really didn't make any trades to be honest dog shit day you lying to me <laughs> hey yo wait hold up so uh if if okay wait i'm gonna slow this down just are you like planning on trading up because the one thing i hate about pff is it doesn't show you who's actually like still on the board yeah fair um 
I don't want to like with it. I just want to trade up. How about that? Just because you can trade up, you can trade up. I'll just, I'll just make it slower because it's the first, especially if you want to trade up in the first round. We'll just slow it down a little bit. And right. we know who's who's going. If I'm gonna trade up, I'm I'm calling Denver. So let's see who's there at at twelve. Mm, okay. All right, we'll start the draft then. Let it roll. Um. Okay. Do you think there'll Wait, be a three quarterback run? Is that what is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I. I, I, it's hard to believe that the Patriots wouldn't go a quarterback, but I don't know. I, I'll tell you what. It definitely sounds like the Vikings are going with J.J. <laughs> All right, so here we All are. Right. This is where you want me to stop it. Let's see the board. All right, you cannot. Are you able to? Because I, I really don't know how to see the board. Oh, on this that's thing. actually crazy. See, that's the thing I hate about PFF. Are you able to pull it up? Or I can pull it up, and I can read off who's available if you want. Yeah, let me do that. let you pull it up. Yeah. I'll, I'll pull it up, yeah, on a second page. And then I'll uh, oh, match the picks. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Like, like I'll just, you know, we know who, yeah. who's taken, so we'll know who's available. I'm being all that. difficult and shit. Watch me snipe yeah. and make the trade. Piss. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shit there. Oh, this thing is going so slow. Oh, wait a minute. Well, oh, no, no, you. I got it. My bad. No, no, I got it. I got you it. got it? Yeah, I got to rethink. How'd you, I started oh, like. Here's the speed right here. Because I, I redid it like I was doing the Lions mock draft. And I was like, wait a minute. I still don't know who's available. All right, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be the Broncos. That'll break it down for me. I don't uh, know who's available. All right, so here you go. You got a. Uh, you got a. Uh, it looks like you got Brock. Brock Bowers is available. Okay. Yep. Yep. You got a. Uh, let me see. You got Dallas Cooper DeGene. He's okay. available. Dallas Turner's gone. Yeah, Dallas Turner's gone. Uh, Byron Murphy's available. Quinion Mitchell, Jesswan Newton. Um, is there a certain position? I can go to tackle here. We got Faltanu, I think is available. Trey, Fal- Trey Faltano, how do you pronounce his name? Mims is available, uh, as well as Graham Barton. You want me okay. to go to Edge? Uh, so I was going to talk Versus Jared available. Verse. Is Verse the guy? No, because he wants guys collapsing in the middle. Well, I guess Verse would be strong. Yeah, Verse could do that. Do you value yeah. him as a piece that worthy of trading up for? I I could I could I could see it, I could see it. I mean, if it, if you were telling me like I had to give up like a future first, no shot, no shot. Would you hate me if I just carried on and went to nineteen? No, nah, man, you do your thing. All right. You only ask for input. Like you do your thing. You want to keep it rolling. I mean, if you want to trade up, trade up. Like if that, it feels like you were really wanting to do that. Do, am I drafting from what I would do? Am I drafting from what I think Brad's going to do? I also have the wrong mock pulled up. I apologize. Um, this is the right one, right? Yeah, I had the wrong one pulled up. There you go. Wait, no, this is the wrong one now. Hold up. Yeah, I think you. I think you have the wrong one now. <laughs> okay, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. wait. I don't think you ever uh, moved off for the first one. No, you're right. You're right. All right, here we go. That's the right one. That's the right one. No, no. Okay, um, what'd you say? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Everybody in the chat freaking out for Quinion all day. I thought about it, but here's the thing. I, I promise you, I will guarantee to you that they don't want to start a rookie cornerback on a Super Bowl run. Unless they're going to sign somebody and they're going to draft a cornerback. And if he wins out at some point through the process, obviously throughout the regular season, then I can see him starting him and they'll have to be comfortable with him into the playoffs. But I don't think they're grabbing like a Quinion Mitchell unless he's just there. I don't know if they're going to move you- up because he's not going to start right away. Why would you move up to grab a guy who's not going to start? Yeah, I mean, could he start right away though? I mean, like, like for example, right? Mosley, we know that he's dealing with his injury. Let's say Mosley's healthy, and Meek yeah. Robertson, like he could start over a Meek, right? He could Meek could be a backup piece. We thought that when we got came, we had Cam Sutton. Yeah. Um, and then it's just him and Mosley. Like you wouldn't. I just don't see that. I don't. I don't think they give up capital to make that move. I mean, I'll resume the draft, and if 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 I'm at like seventeen and he's not off the board, I might I might pick up the phone. How about okay. that? Let's get it going. Let's get it going then. All right. Let it roll a little bit. You tell me when to stop. Oh. <laughs> Yo, the- that's how it be. You want me to just play. keep it moving? No, fuck it. Fuck these guys. <laughs> hey, refresh. Sean refresh, Payton. refresh the big dog. 
<laughs> yo, yo, wait. Do you want me to? <laughs> you want me to keep it going? Yeah, keep going. I, no, right, I was right, only going to do that if he was there at seventeen. I don't really don't think that Brad's going to move up to grab a guy that's not going to start for him. I just don't. Okay. Well, Jared Verse just went. He went at pick fifty. And and I remember this being kind of like a, if I'm remembering correctly, is this kind of like a weaker cornerback? Class? I guess there's not a guy like there's been the past couple of years where it's like uh, there's, there's been guys going top ten the past couple of years. I don't this, think, this think that. from what I've seen, I don't think there's that corner out there. But damn, if I'd have known Jerzon was there, I probably would have moved up. Johnny, that's all right. You can, hey, I I do think though cornerbacks extremely deep from what I've seen, but I don't think it's yeah. maybe as like the very top heavy kind of thing. All right, who we got here? Hey, you I got have, your boy. I already know my guy. Yeah. I about real quick. I don't know why they keep making him available here. To be honest with you, there's no way know. in hell. No, the that Steelers are grabbing him at the very least. All right, let me see what else we got though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JP, JPJ. They love Peyton Wilson. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Are there any trades that I get off the trade? Yep, you got uh, four offers. Niners, Chargers, Falcons, and Steelers. Can you see that? Niners at yeah, uh, 31. Yeah, show, show what they offered? No, you. it's just teams interested. You have okay. to like make the, make the deal, yeah. Niners, Falcons. Yeah, 31, Ravens, 37, 43, and 51. So the Ravens were interested too? No, not the Ravens. Uh, Niners, oh. Chargers, Falcons, Steelers. 31, 37, 43, 51. I might just take JPJ, bro. Just because of the versatility. Yeah, I mean, if it's he's not, just going to sit there, I don't know how you. How yeah, you I, take can't, him, I can't just not. I can't just not draft him. The versatility I mean, you could itself. go down and take and take that man Kool Aid if he's chilling there. You know? Kool Aid got. Oh, no, Kool Aid went. Ooh, okay. See, I like that. That's respectable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm take. I'm gonna take JPJ. They, right, fuck, they love versatility. If there's one thing. Yeah. Two things I can confirm about Brad Holmes. One, he doesn't like to spend a lot of money. Two, he loves versatile. <laughs> okay, I want to pause it. Um, are you thinking about trying to move up for somebody here just so I don't miss it? Or are you just going to kind of wait to see, like, maybe we get closer? Um, or do you want me to, like, read off some targets? Like, is that – Can you tell me who's on the board at receiver? Yeah. Or no? Yeah, I can. Um, so we would have – Wait, hold up, let me go over here. Uh, we would have Troy Franklin would be available. You would have Roman Wilson. You would have Ricky Roman Wilson still Purcell. there. Roman Wilson still there. Jermaine Burton still there. Uh, you'd have Keon Coleman still there. Who else would be there? Uh, I think Lad. Yeah, Lad McConkey would be there. Let her ride. Let her ride. All right. Oh, okay. Led just went. Keon just went. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, what? Oh, man. Yo, what are man, you? Man, hey. <laughs> One, two, three, four in a row. Are you kidding me right now? Yo, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. No, that was crazy. Um, uh, you, <laughs> you, you think about trading up? Uh, what the fuck, or do you want to? Uh, you still have Franklin. You still have Roma. You still got Ricky. You know, you got uh, you got Burton. Right, you got uh, you got Leggett would still be available. No, still they took Leggett at thirty five. Damn it! Oh dang, that's I didn't guy one. Yeah, I said that out loud too. That's crazy. Um, yeah, they got Polks available. You know, if you want to go up and get it, kind of guy. Like you got Polk. all the Washington receivers. Yeah, yeah, they're still there. Right. You got Baker. I like Baker. What do you, do you have any thoughts on uh, on Devontae Walker? He's one guy I haven't watched yet. The only thing I've seen is like when he was doing the Senior Bowl. Like whoa, whoa, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. They have Rosen Garden going 43. No, that seems kind of crazy. I know that's like completely off topic. I was watching him today. That seems kind of insane. I was just throwing that out there. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. All right. We'll go back to it. Off, off. All right, pause it. Let me just see the board. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're at. Can you move, do you have you... a position? Uh, I, I really wish I could just show it, but I really I can't. I, Chad, let's y'all know how. Um, is there? Is I, it? Yeah. How do you see it? I I have a second mock pulled up, and I'm just reading names that I know haven't been taken. Can you put that mock on the screen? I can't. Yeah. Difficult? I'm so sorry. 
No, yeah, it, it it'll probably be best if you tell me the position because then I can kind of like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I probably grab Fisk. I probably would have moved up to snipe him, and or I was look at. Two okay. Lights. All right, let me so, let me see him real quick though. I just, I just want to see the. Well, I don't. Is. Okay, give me a position because this is just at twelve, so I don't even know. I was okay. just gonna like go through and see who had him and take it and kind of match it up. Yeah. Like like give me a position. What position you want to see first? I guess do DB and do. All right. Receiver. We'll do we'll do corner first. So you would have because Tampa was here. gone, Quinion's gone, Wiggins gone, Cooper yep. Dejon is gone. I uh, yeah, Tampa. Kamari's is gone. gone, and that's Rickestraw is gone. Kamari's gone. I don't think I don't think Lasseter went. He went just before me. I could be wrong. All right. No. Oh yeah. No, he went to Indy. Yeah, yeah. He did go to Indy. Yeah. So Rickestraw, I think, is still available. Kyrie Jackson still available. That's your dude. Uh, uh, Max Melton Phillips. Now I know yeah. the draft one like this, or people one like this, but I like Ronaldo Green a lot. Like a lot. Take him. I mean, I wouldn't take him here, but yeah. yeah. All right, I guess let it play. I'll, I'll let it fall because I'm right here in my pick anyway. I'm so sorry for making you do that. No, you're good. I and I think if you wanted to go, I mean, if you want to go Green here for this mock, he would he would be available. I, I would think. I'm not saying you want to go. I mean, you could probably wait another draft pick, honestly. Yeah, probably good. And I, I mean, Kyrie as well. Yeah, last year, once the song got sniped, got kind of butt hurt, not going to lie. All right, we'll let it roll. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I didn't even notice I'll, you. I'll just, take, I'll just take where I'm at or trade back. All right. Well, I take it a lot. Ooh. Okay. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Marshawn Neiman. That's your pick? Lock it in? I'm on the wrong one. Yes. All right. Ma'am, let me pause it. See, it makes like the immediate next draft pick. But... Oh, holy shit. It's a... Um... Yeah. Break it down, man. Yeah, let's 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 move up and see that corner here to see if Renardo's there. Wait, so you... or is is Renardo there? I guess is what I should just ask. Yeah, yeah, no, Renardo's there. Renardo's there. Okay. They have him ranked at uh, they had him. They have him ranked at a uh, ninety-one average draft position is eighty-nine. See if they'll you... take my Minnesota pick and I guess one of our six rounders from Tampa, or should I try seven? Oh man, I I would I would, I mean we could see like like okay two hundred five forty five percent chance or forty three percent chance. So maybe if you went like uh, ah man, you I think you could probably wait. I'm gonna be honest with you. I I don't want to like make it wrong, but I think you could wait until your next yeah. pick on this simulator and he'll he'll be there. That's fair. I really want Ky- Kyrie to fall, but oh yeah. okay, yeah he went immediate. I it wouldn't even let me pause the thing. Yeah, yeah. And I am I so yeah am I doing this off of what I would do or off of Brad would do Brad would do right. Or, I, I thought you were doing your mock draft. <laughs> this is your mock a draft. couple of dumb decisions. All right, wait. So this, wait, you wouldn't have made these picks? <laughs> I, I would have made these picks for sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. I you just do. like me wanting to move up as like a me thing versus like a Brad thing. Nah, you know? do what you want to do. If that's your guy, go get him. I mean, Brad will go get his guy. So, like, if you like Green, I'm not mad. I just think he'll be available at 73 based on the simulator. Yeah, I thought what's his name would be there too. No, this is true. This is true. But it's all right. Let it play. I'm a Greg Green. All right. We'll let it roll. He's going to go with the next pick. I get, Every time I've said something, yeah. <laughs> did he go? Yeah. No, he's, okay. he's still available. Uh, still good. Ooh, I did not like Devontae's walk again. Snipe, though. I thought he'd fall away. All right. He's there. He's there. All right. Hold on. Let's, let's scroll down the, the big board real quick. Let's see. I just want to yep, see some names. Yep. Spencer Rattler. Is that your guy, huh? I do like Spencer, Spencer Rattler. Oh. How do you feel about Johnny Wilson? I he's one of the receivers I haven't got into. I got into a lot of guys around him, but not him. I know he's huge. He's like six foot seven, but I haven't seen him play, to be honest. I've seen Baker. I could tell you about Baker. Ba- Baker intrigues me, to be honest. Especially if Josh isn't back. I I could tell you about Brendan Rice, but yeah, I couldn't you, tell you. We about go back that. to the board real quick. Yep. It's probably- I like Brandon Dor- Dorlores, too. I think he's a big pass rusher. 
just undersized, especially for us. I feel like sicko. Kyle would take Johnny Wilson. Hey, look, take it. I don't know anything about him, so I can't. I, I won't give you a grade on that one. But and then I want to trade with. I want to try to trade with Chicago. Okay, so we're taking Johnny Wilson. Taking Johnny Wilson. Okay. The, what was what was uh green? Uh, Rinka. wait, what? Oh, he's what ranked at a uh, uh, eighty nine. Oh damn! So I could actually I could chill. I don't have to trade with Chicago. Yeah, no, I that's I uh well, now I mean now you might have to you have to pick one sixty four. So yeah, if you're trying to get him, <laughs> I mean, uh, what do you what do you think? You want to you want to let it roll? I mean, are you waiting for one sixty four? Oh yeah, let it roll, let it roll, let it roll. <laughs> All right, you can. I'll speed it up a little bit too, unless you. Well, stop at like seven seventy. Yeah. <laughs> Because these guys need a cornerback. <laughs> okay. Let's let's move up. Okay, move up right here. Let's give them. <laughs> Don't really have one. Try it. <laughs> Try what? <laughs> Throw two one in there. Let's see. These motherfuckers. <laughs> I guarantee you they're gonna take my guy. <laughs> Yo. I can't do it. We can throw in a future and give him a third. No, I ain't give giving him all that for this. No. Whoa. All right. Well, how about this? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. No. Ah, oh, dang. So you really don't. I like said it. good day, sir. Well, I'll do. I'll, I'll do. I'll do the very next with uh, with Bengals. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> see if they take. All right. He's still good. He's still good. Okay. See what I'm saying is, bam. Hey, do I, I want to? Do I want to give up a third round pick for a fourth round pick? <laughs> that makes sense. No, this is a third round pick. It's third round. You're still good. You're Melon lot, is still bro. on the board, I believe. Yeah. Appreciate you, Drew. How you doing, man? Uh, <laughs> easy look, bro. If you're convicted, you go and get that dude because he will not be there at 164. <laughs> Maybe you can wait a little bit closer to 90 based on their board. But yeah, is Max Melton gone? Actually, what round is one sixty four in? Uh, fifth. Yeah, we don't have a fourth round fifth, so we just don't have a fourth round pick. Give him. Try give him one sixty four, and round four for next we year. We have an extra. We do have an extra fourth. Okay. So. All right. All right. Now put two hundred five on that too. Ah, okay. Okay. Spice it up a little bit. Oh my god! <laughs> Give him round seven next year. Okay, I like what you're doing. Yeah. Jesus, these guys. There's a little bit of intrigue. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Let's offer it. All right. Try adding two forty nine. What is this mock? There's no way to say. There's no way. <laughs> Easy, you're going too far, bro. Easy, you're going. <laughs> you're like trading up 84 picks, though. That's a lot. Right, That's so offer, him, offer him 205 in round three next year. Okay. Best I could do. I don't know. Okay. About that, but... Okay, you want to? Ooh. All right, so what do you want me to take? So take, take 164 off, off. Okay, 164 is off. Oh, fuck. They, all right. 201. Two and one. I right, pull one sixty four. Fuck it, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> hey, that's forty four percent. Could happen. All right, I'll try round six for next year. This feels like a lot, don't it? I mean, let's attempt it before we put the round six on. Let's just try it like this. All right. Got it done. Got it done. Next year's third is gone. Blake Corum, I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> let's see the, this big. Wait, board. oh, I'm under the luck. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Max Melton is there. Max Melton is there. Malachi is there. I'm not that high on Max Melton, there? man. Look at my grades. Not that high. Huh? Isn't Trey Benson supposed to be like one of the better running backs in the class? I've heard so, I've heard so, but I haven't seen him. All right. <laughs> just start over. This is bad. No, it's not. We're just making moves. We're making our during calls. Come on, man. 
Well, is my is my he, is the guy? The guy you want is there. Let's get him. All right, let's lock it in. Look, let's not even think about it. He's we at ninety though. I could have waited. I guess. I thought you said eighty. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Not now. There's no risk because if you would have went, you would have been sad for the rest of the mock. That's how it goes. Um, I'm just right. You got two hundred five and two forty nine. Are we like chilling? Do you think, or do you think like maybe I'll package those? I did not grab an offensive lineman. Can't believe Trey Benson you did not that long. I mean, you could take one at two of you know, or you can move him up a little bit. Maybe he's like one seventy. I'll grab someone late. I feel. You think he'll trade up, or do you think we're just gonna let it ride? I can speed this up. But I hate. Or is, there a, or is there a player that you got your eye on? Uh, probably not. So at this point, man, this late in the draft. I mean, there were a couple, but I don't want to be. I don't want to make too many moves. I feel like I'd be doing too much. Right. Okay. I'm gonna get Chaz can kill me. Go ahead and speed this thing. No. Up. No, you're good, man. You're good. It's Muhammad good. Kamara went to 131. I remember that. Yeah, that oh gosh, it's going so fast. Okay. <laughs> Yo, it went so fast. All right, here we are, chat. 205. All right. This browser's let's, BPAs. Let's, let's finish this thing off right. I like JV on Cohen, man. I just don't know if he can do okay. zone. My boy, Tanor. Your boy, I think it's Tanor. What pick did you get? Probably Tanner. Similar, similar range. I don't know exactly, but similar. I need to watch Josh Wallace, bro. I got to watch him. Dylan, By the, Will Johnson is going to be insane when he comes out next year. Go ahead. Absolutely. Scroll down a little bit. All right. I think I saw someone I liked. A little AJ yeah. Woods. Oh, you watched Brandon Coleman. I mean, you got a little offensive line right there, right? Didn't you say you watched him? I lied. Or maybe you, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you could have been like, uh, yo, that's my guy. We take him. a little bit. That was a layup, man. Uh, okay. I know you've watched Anim. Anim. I saw a name that I liked. I just don't know where it went. McMahon. Dylan McMahon. Ooh, okay, NC State. See, remember, you had an NC State guy. Okay, have you seen this guy play? Like, let us know. I, I, I'm curious. Uh, he killed, he, so oh, there's this there's this uh, stat out there, three-cone stat for offensive linemen. You might be familiar with it. Yeah. I don't remember the exact numbers. I want to say it's like 4-4 four, four or something like that. For three-cone? Uh, I could be wrong. Definitely you might be talking wrong. about like 20-yard shuttle. 7-4, seven, 6-4. Four, four. Okay, 6-4 would be a big time. I'll find it. Hutchinson find had like a six seven three cone. And that was like elite. I'll get it for you right now. Okay. Offensive lineman. Oh, he did take Jackson Powers Johnson. Hey, yo, hold up. You did draft an offensive line. Did. <laughs> hey, <forgot>. yo. <laughs> it's weird when it's not on my screen and I can't like see what I, I know. I don't know why they don't show, why they don't show you that. All right, wait, we saved one. We saved one right there. We but we go BPA. I mean, you know, this well, is true. This is true. Get another lineman. I'm on board with him, man. I like building up the trenches. You you got a stat on him. Let let the people know. What was it? I'll find it for you. Sorry. All right. All right. Hey, Ryan, he's still doing it, bro. He's still taking him. Um <laughs> while he's doing that. I don't know. I I, I guess I probably have to watch more. I mean, geez, Max Belton tested incredibly well. So four three nine forty, forty and a half inch vert. Is he good arm length? Was my no? I, someone was asking about him early. I just kind of wrote a confident corner, undersized, play strength, uh, below average press. Yeah, I didn't like him as a press corner. Um, thought he was good as an off man corner. I guess I liked him as a zone, but I didn't see enough there. So I, I probably need to watch more for that aspect. I don't know. It just I guess it depends on where you rank him. But I know athletic. I mean, athletically, like it's all there. But a little stiff in the ankles, though. I don't know. It, it's probably. It's it's probably. Um, it just depends on like where people are think liking him at. Um, I, Frank Gore Jr. Yeah, I I haven't seen him play, but that just sounds fire. So I hear you there. Easy, the most entertaining mock. Now this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Easy, I hate you... I hate this. This is not fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hey, take BPA, bro. Take BPA. I scroll. Okay, let's. Who's, who's, who's the BPA pick? I. Why can't I find this stack? Hey, I was cares. literally just looking at the other day. So I've watched Zakari Franklin a little bit. That's the only receiver I've seen out of these guys. Uh, I tried to watch David White. 
my film was trash, so I didn't watch him. But Zachary Franklin, I think he had like, was it him that had like four receptions last year, something like that? It's like, man, that's. I don't know how you get drafted. Um, could have been the other guy though. I'm so pissed. Check no, kickers. Oh, you could, hey, you could go kicker right here. That's true. They're all gonna be there. I probably grab that one in the last because they'll, they'll be there too. This right. is true. This is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, statistically, I had the numbers for this. Mevis was four for seven from fifty plus. I think it was twenty four of thirty. Um, but he made a sixty one yarder this season. This is, Josh Carter is a fan favorite. And then the rest are punters. Will Reichert. I had his stats. I don't remember what they were. I don't think he had any log kicks. I think he was super accurate. I can pull that out though. Yeah, I've only Chad, I've only went through four games for Max Milton, so I'm kind of I'm kind of like light on what I've seen of him. Jarvis Brownlee is a guy I haven't mocked at all yet. Really like the player. Haven't mocked him at all yet, though. So I don't know what's going on with that. Sorry, I'm looking for this. Wait, so you said it's his three cone time? I can pull it up. It might have been shuttles, to be honest with you. Let me do this. Let me do this. What's the dude's name? McMahon. All right. I'll pull up my thing over here. Mc, McMahon. Dylan McMahon. Okay. My bad, guys. My bad. You're good. I'm going to... I'm going to see what his numbers are right here. But he's coming off. Uh, okay, so 6'3", 300, basically. Uh, 31, one, 30, 31 and 3 quarter inch arms, 33 inch vertical. He had a 4'3", 20-yard shuttle, a 7'2", 6'3", cone. It's pretty solid. 5'10", uh, 40. What was the shuttle, the short shuttle? 4'3", 3. Come home. Okay. All that, right. So that that's that was the stat I was looking for. The one that uh, Ryan put in the in the chat it was uh, any offensive lineman that has uh, ran better than a four four seven short shuttle. They've all gone on to start in the NFL. Oh, majority of them, or at least like seventy four. Interesting. interesting. Twenty four were drafted. Of the twenty four that were drafted, they ran a four four seven Damn, short shuttle. Eighty four percent of them. Oh, they went on to start 84% of their NFL careers. Their NFL All games. right. Cheat code. That's what I was looking for for, for a half hour. There. Uh, here, give me two of yeah. his brother. Oh, you don't want the kicker? You want two of his brother? Was the Alabama kicker mm-hmm. there? They're all there, yeah. I'm not give mad at him, Leah. Ooh, okay. I had the stats on him, man, but. I really, Whoa, really, Edgar. really, really, really wanted Xavier Leggett to follow me somewhere, but it didn't happen. So. Yeah, that was that was disappointing. I'm be because that's your dude. That was a little that different, hurt. bro. No, nah, I, I, I can't, I can't go with this mic, bro. How are they gonna give you a B minus, dog? This pick alone, they should have docked one. points. You Ooh. literally ran out of time to take Dylan. Let's be fair. Here. I did. I did. did they I run moved out of time? to the like next team. Yeah, but you're day three, though. You got like five minutes. <laughs> No, nah, overall, man, look. And they gave got, me a C minus for it, too. I'm, that's true. That is your lowest grade. Um, you know, the kicker makes a ton of sense. I haven't seen a lot of Renardo Green, so I'll be honest on that one. Have you ever seen Johnny Wilson? So both these dudes I need to watch. Have seen some Marshawn Nealon. I haven't seen a lot of Johnny Wilson, but it felt like those X receivers were flying. Literally, right. right when I was talking about grip, when four of them went. Yeah, no, they did. It was insane. Um, they look look real good for a second there. Marshawn Nealon watched a little bit of him. Thought he was thought he was, was fine. Nothing stood out to me really about him. And then Powers Johnson. I mean, you can't go they wrong with that dude. I don't know how he's how do they give, there. How do they give yeah. me a on that? That's wild. And he could be in a perfect spot because even if he's got to clean some things up, like you know, he could just be a backup here. But and I wouldn't have an issue with that. Marshawn Nealon, though. I mean, do you have any like, like what are your thoughts on him? I think he's baby Hutch. Uh, I think he's baby Hutch. And uh, I, I talked about it when we were going over your mock draft. Is like, yeah, the picks or the guys that you're grabbing that you you know aren't going to start, or you kind of iffy on it. I feel like you want them to be able to replace what the other guy gives you. I think Marshawn Nealon does that for you. He's a hard ass. He works his ass off, and he does exactly what Dan Campbell likes to just collapse on the other side of the line. So I don't think he's necessarily going to get you sacks. I think he's more so of like. Really, just a disruptor, if you will. 
Hey, no, I mean, I need to watch more of him, so I, I like oh, that. Shit. Yeah, so I was in love with the mock draft either, guys. In fact, it's weird. I, I'm blaming Dion. No, I'm not blaming Dion. <laughs> I just, it's, I feel like uh, I felt rushed because I had to make you like scroll through everything and do all like nah, all bro. the traits. No, nah, you're good, man. You're good. It's all good. It's, it's fine. We got it done. It looks good. It looks good, man. I mean, look, there's certain guys I there's certain guys I just haven't seen on here. Most of them, to be honest with you. So I've only seen a little bit of Neyland. But you said that you think he brings you are you saying that you think he'd be good at opposite of Fudge, or are you saying he brings similar skill set either, either or either or like I think he could oh, play. Okay. Yeah, I think he I mean mix it up. But yeah, I think he uh what he is is a, uh, is a Dan Campbell guy, I guess, to, to wrap it up. Okay. But he's like six three, like two seventy something, I wanna say. Uh well, he's, he definitely can go all three downs. He plays both the run and the pass, and the motor's just insane. Uh, he had a couple of opportunities You're... to transfer out of Western Michigan, kind of like Brandon Fisk did, to go to Florida State and a couple other places, but he decided to stay because I, I think they ended up keeping his defensive lineman coach, and he was kind of just being loyal in, in that aspect of it. But uh, he's not elite athletic, but he's try hard. Dan Campbell loves him some tryhards. This is true. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that, man. If that's the case, I'm on board with it. I like it. Um, would you say then? I guess I don't know where you are, but you 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 you're pretty convinced on this guy. So I'm gonna watch him for sure. Would you say you, you like him more either? than? I haven't watched much of him at all. No, I may have went through one game, so I got to get through more of it. I haven't seen much of him at all. Um, Darius Robinson probably has higher upside. Okay, but so Marshawn you- Ewan has. A higher floor, in my opinion. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Well, All right. I, mean, I guess Darius got a high floor too. I think he'll end up. I think Darius is going to end up playing inside majority of like the snaps, unless yeah, he's just that would make his sense. job is just sitting edge or setting edge. Just do that because he's big, big enough to do it. You know. Mm-hmm. He also yeah, I, he, he comes out of stands really high. He's already really tall too. Who Darius Robinson? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think he could. He's this is one of those defenses where he could make it work really well to his skill set. He's explosive uh, out of a three point stance, and it's like for what we ask of Pascal and Kaminsky, and I think where they want that to be kind of part of the future, he could just plop into that pretty easily. So that's a big reason I like him too, because not just a player, but I also just like the fit. But I know, yeah, like he was the one to me. Like I definitely had Knox too. Um, I think I, I my I ended up my grade ended up being higher just based on what I think he's going to turn into. Ba- kind of what you just said versus what even is all there right now. I think what he's going to turn into is uh, where I kind of just bet on it. I was like, I just like like what I think he's tr- he's going towards. So uh, yeah. but I guess that's just a draft. I mean, that's <laughs> that's how it goes. Uh, okay, so what do we think? Chat, give us a grade. I'm nervous. Uh, I was trying to. I was trying to. Fu- oh yes, DT fan man. That's his grade. So if y'all got, you know, let let us know. Um, what oh, y'all thanks. think of this? Look, man. I, man, I mean, I feel like it's unfair for me to what grade. What's your grade? This. I know. I feel like it's unfair because I haven't seen enough of these dudes. Like I feel. I grade you guys. You no, know, you're right. You're right. Look, I mean, I if if there's a if there's a scenario where we get Powers Johnson, I think at 29, it's amazing. So that alone, I give that an A plus. Um, Neyland, you you, I mean, for what you're saying. I like what you're saying. Uh, the little bit that I, I had watched, I could see where the schematic fit would come into play. You know, this is a guy that you could probably play, you know, in similar roles to even how you'd want to play as a stand-up James Houston. Because I, I think he played a lot of stand-up, if I remember correctly, at Western Michigan. So there's that. I yeah. don't know much about Johnny Wilson. I just know that he's massive. But when you're talking about a guy that's seven, six foot seven, a lot of times it's a late-round pick, and you're like, oh, maybe he's a tight end, maybe he's a receiver. But when you're looked at as a high pick, which they are looking at it as – I would assume that there's a lot of darn talent there. It's not just that he's big. He's super talented. He's making it work at that size. Again, Green, I haven't seen much on. I have no idea who the heck Dylan is, to be real with you. And then Will Riker. Makes sense, man. Let's get a darn kicker. Look, man, I, you ain't going to find me mad about drafting a kicker. I, I think we should we should be okay with drafting a kicker this year. Overall, I think positions were filled out were filled out good. I think the fact that you got the pick at 80 at corner, I think you filled out the positions that you could like make the argument that you would really want to have really well. And then the thing is, I would ask you to do this. So if the Lions sign, re-sign Josh Reynolds, what do you feel about still drafting Johnny Wilson? Uh, red zone threat at 6-7. I mean, re- so you would re- still re- be on board with taking him? 
yeah, I, I don't think uh, – I mean, that's that's how Brad does it, right? I mean, I probably grabbed him a little earlier than, than most. Yeah. What was the official 40 time? That's a good question. 4-5. Five. 4-5. Four, five. Which is pretty darn for, good. Pretty darn right, good. 6-7. Yeah, I, I think I think yeah, definitely in the back of the end zone or red zone. Uh, definitely, guys sniping out some touchdowns for you. All right, there you go. I mean, okay, uh, yeah. The only thing, I, like I said, I think Green. I, I also think he played in the spot both, this last year, right? So I'm is like, that like your good. is that your view, like, or you just like the fact that he has flexibility? Because I believe he he played slot this past year after playing wide. Could be wrong. Yeah, he, so he played he played safety and he played uh, slot and he's played outside. He's played. Okay. That's yeah. That's why I like him, the versatility and the tape I watched on him. Have you watched him yet? No. Watch him against LSU. Okay. I'm talking about yeah. like like winning reps against Blake Neighbors, who's some people have argued the best wide receiver in the draft. Yeah. Okay. I'm on. Hey, I'm on board. I mean, hyping it up. I like it. Uh, hey, easy. How are you on time, man? Because if you like, if you have to get out of here, we can wrap this thing up, or we can do a little more. It depends what you want to do. All right. I mean, we can either do we can either do a, a mock together. I could show my last mock, whatever you want to do. I have it sitting here if you want to show it, or if you want to do one together, we could do that. We could do both. I mean, it whatever works for me. I probably gotta get going. Okay. Just cause I'm I'm getting the tech. Don't You're getting get okay. All right. I think you cut out a little. I don't know what you said, but I think you said you gotta get going. So if you gotta get going, I understand. <laughs> All right. Hey, it makes sense. Uh, Go ahead. Um, what do you do? You want to come on the heavyweight at some point this week? Come on, man. You know I'm trying to come on. Let's do it. All right. Want well, to bring your mock then? Ooh, what should you, I you, save you, it? You, Let. What do you want to do? It's up to you. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show it right now, just because it's not gonna be the same. I will okay. bring you guys a new mock. That way, I give you guys new players whenever you guys okay. have me on. All right. So I'll okay, just show it real it. quick. I'm down for. Oh, actually, I shouldn't say that. You we'll, said this. We'll communicate week. text. That way, you gotta. Let's. Let's communicate via text. Uh, chat. Hey, easy. Tell the people where they can find you. This is my other mock if you guys want to look at it. Where do they find you, man? Uh, you can find me at Wilbur Sports in this very building. That's not hard to point. <laughs> That's Spencer. That's me. We're live 5 to 7. Also, you can check out my guy Broder right fresh in the morning uh, from 8 to 10. Broder right there in Wilbur Sports chat. I'm sorry, in your chat. I, we're supposed to say Wilbur Sports chat. So I'm just saying that. I apologize. But, yeah, you can find Broder from 8 to 10. Fresh in the morning while you're getting ready for work. That's what I do. I'm away to work as well. Mm. Uh, him, Detroit Kool Aid, KG, uh, who I think is a big up and comer as well, too. JB as well. They'll be on here. And they cover all sports, by the way, all Detroit sports. Where I'm kind of, I'm not going to lie. My streak is football and basketball. I'm not going to lie. That's that's where it's at. Feel like I'm growing in hockey. I also feel like I'm kind of going to just make predictions when it comes to this hockey stuff. Is that, okay. listen, now I know what the hell I was looking at. I made a call on a couple of Swedish guys. Guess yeah. what, Dion? I'm not bullshitting. Stevie Y took them all. Not all of them, but three of them. Like before, I, I was just like, yo, that, this guy looks cool. I think it'd be sweet. They took him, and then he takes it. Wow. I've been saying, like, a little bit of Casper. like a draft guru, kind of, like a little bit. Uh, no, little honestly, no it's or? only two people. No, I'm, I'm sorry. It's only two guys. It was, it was Soderbloom and Edmondson. But he took them, which is kind of crazy for me not knowing what the fuck I was looking at. I was yeah. just watching the game. I'm like, yo, these guys, the guys, they feel like they got it. They got a higher, higher grasp of the game. But yeah. I love that. I and love I'm that. live 5 to 7. Dion will be on this week. Obviously, dropping another mock draft. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Sorry for rushing out here. No, you're good, man. Hey, appreciate you joining easy. Uh, actually, and you know what I'm going to do? Next time I'm Go bringing ahead. a draft, too, because that was, I wasn't proud of this. That's okay, that. I know I, know I got to be minus, but I wasn't proud of it. <laughs> Yo, chat. Tell me how, real quick, chat. Tell me how y'all are giving him a higher grade than mine. I just need to understand. <laughs> he literally ran out of time during his draft pick. Y'all didn't see that because I already made my drafts. But I'm just saying, it's a little bit crazy. It's a little bit crazy. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you joining, man. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up by just kind of talking through this real quick, and then I'll end the yeah. screen. Yeah, I'll on the screen. I'll hop in the street. So, I'll comment in the chat. All right, all right. I'll see you soon, man. Deuces. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, chat. So I'm just gonna end it with this. Uh, my man said, plead my case. So I'll. Actually, can I get myself out of the way a little bit? I'm kind of out of the way, but not really. I don't even know what the heck's going on in the background here. Let me let me do this. Oh, my goodness. Actually, this doesn't look too bad. This doesn't look too bad. So, shout out to Easy Man. Uh, 
Tuesday mocks is kind of our thing. So I guess we're going to continue with that doing mock drafts on Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, so quickly I'll kind of run through this. So obviously I started off Jackson powers, Johnson. I don't know why PFF is letting him become available. Uh, he's still the highest player that I have graded. I think to this point, I think so to me, it's just like, yo, I'm just going to take him. Um, Behind that, Jatavion Sanders, don't know if I'm saying his name right. Like I kind of did with the last one with Burton. Like I didn't come in like looking like I had to take something. Like my man says, I like Mitchell Wright Zilster. I like him too. And that's the weird thing about this pick, right? Like I really like those guys too. I like James Mitchell. I liked him a lot. We drafted him. But to me, uh, Sanders kind of separates himself from the other tight ends that I've watched. I probably went through like four others. I think there's a gap. I think there's a lot of upside. I think he's got a lot of upside as a run blocker, which intrigues the heck out of me because I don't I don't think it's all there. I think he's got a great frame, and I think there's a lot that he can add to his body as a run blocker. But then when you talk about him as a receiving option with all those receivers, a little bit limited in terms of the production, I think, that he had. Xavier Worthy, you also have uh, Mitchell on the opposite side. But I think as a as a route runner, you can see the ability to just separate. And I've got to be honest, man, when I watch him, like it, it doesn't connect like it does Laporta. I don't think he's the same prospect Laporta was. But there are certain things about his route running where I say he's a little bit of a mismatch here. He's a little bit of a problem. Then also he's very capable once the ball gets in his hands. Chat, here would be my one explanation for this um, is that if you wanted to, and it still would be difficult because like, you know, James Mitchell, I think he's on the final year of his rookie deal now. But if you looked at it as when the Rams added Tyler Higby and then they went out and got Gerald Everett, Maybe there's a case that you could make there um, with kind of the talent level. Everett was a second round pick as well. So I just went with it. Load up tight end. Hey, bro, <laughs> uh, I'm just looking at it like this. It's going to be weird because I think 12 personnel is what separate us, made us unique. So I think it'd be kind of weird. But at the same time, it's like, if he's just an awesome weapon, make defenses adjust. We'll figure it out. Imagine Dan always uh, taking a look at upgrading tight end whenever he can. Absolutely. This is absolutely true um, because, you know, Shane Zilstra, I liked what he did in camp. There's limitations there. He's not much of a run blocker. This guy has upside to be both, and it's, I think it's difficult to find those guys. If you think back to when they drafted Sam Laporta, they looked at Sam Laporta as a guy that they thought had a lot of, you know, he played with a really good base in the contact. He had those little traits of a blocker, which bought, which, which, which sold them and like, Hey, Zing, he's not just a receiving threat. This guy can also block too. And they were way ahead of that where I watched him. I didn't see that same blocking prowess, but they visualized the upside just based on the traits that he had. And I think Sa Sanders has easy traits to just evaluate for me where I could just look at him and be like, yo, the traits are there. This guy can pop as a run blocker too. So I took him. That was kind of an easy one just because he was sitting there. Followed it up with Austin Booker. I have my notes, but I lost him. So just to throw that out there. Uh, but Austin Booker does check a lot of boxes. Again, I was trying not to force any pick here, but I just went with the edge rusher at this spot. We have a playmaker that block on offense. Don't matter what position. Absolutely agree with you. Before, because I, I don't know where my notes are, so I'm going to find them. Um, Everett and Higby on the field a lot. Yeah, they, I mean, they were. And, and it's like you could you could run a lot of, you know, 12 personnel. I mean, it would be just instead of using Brock Wright, it would be, hey, we're using Sanders and we're using Hig uh, Laporta. And it's a, it's a little strange, but it's nasty. Um, Dwight was a little bit of a struggle. The two guys that I struggled with here when I traded up was him, and I think his name is Chow Wade Smith. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Those were the other two guys that went back and forth on. I think Wade Smith has um I think Wade Smith has a little bit more of a, a tap ceiling, especially if you ask him to do certain man responsibilities. But to me, Dwight, he has the size. He's six foot two. He's a little bit thinner. I wish his run defense was a little bit more just like go after it, a little bit more hair on fire. I just don't necessarily always get that. I, I think he can defend a run. He's a he can give adequate run support. And he does a nice job protecting like when he's the last line of defense. But what I bought into here was that one, if you play a lot of cover three, I think he's elite half turn. You really like McLaughlin? Okay, yes. And it's just like when you talk about a guy that, that utilizes it, I and mean, you'll see with his footwork, he's got the little T-step, the plant, the drive. I think when you talk about a guy that's so darn effective in half-turn coverage, you would want him to lean more into cover three because of his build, because of that skill set. But I love that idea of um, this type of player. I still think there should be – I would like to see a little more anticipation. He's much more utilized in off-band coverage. He's also a guy that takes the ball away a lot. Um, zone coverage underneath, you'll see him. I think he does a nice job of awareness pre-staff. Like a man said, savvy. I think he does a nice job of awareness. Like, hey, match awareness. Okay, I got a tight end on me. Let me kind of float off of that. He doesn't just get depth in zone coverage. I think his off-man just could use a little bit more like pacing recognition, being a little more anticipate, having a little more anticipation to dive on things. I think his press is kind of a mess. You know, it's there, but it's it's kind of a mess. Footwork is a mess. Don't think it's that quick. So for me, off-man zone, very capable, but especially in half turn, I think he's big time. Harrison Mevis, yeah, I just went with the kicker. I don't think I took a kicker in the last one. So uh, this was a guy that, like I said, I think he had a 61-yard long last season, and he's been pretty efficient in his time in college. And I finished it off with the linebacker, John Trey Hunter. 
which was a, a, he's much more of your today linebacker as an off ball linebacker. But I think what's the standout trait is the coverage upside. It's the standout trait. He's very, very comfortable level two, level three, getting depth, getting depth and pedal, opening up hips, swinging around. So to me, it's like Hunter, there's 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 real issues here. But I think his comfortability in terms of being able to get zone depth, if he would have to carve out a role as a special teamer, no question. But uh, I just took a bet on, you know, there's upside fluidity. So maybe he could turn into something here as a linebacker. But it's at 249. It's kind of a tough spot. I haven't seen a ton of guys around that spot. He's just one guy that I've went through. So I got to be minus. Um, yes, I got to be minus. And I'm okay with that. I really never look at the grades, to be honest with you. Uh, you're going to have to rewatch. Appreciate that. Uh, but, yeah, Austin Booker. Let me see if I have my notes just before I get out of here because I think I had them handy. You like Jackson and McLeathern? Yeah, I like it. I, I do consider the Dwight one doesn't feel like a perfect fit. Here we are with John Tree Hunter, uh, six foot, oh, nearly six foot two, 236. Arm length is really solid. You know, he's obviously got the sideline speed that shows off some of his range. The only thing I think with the McLovin one is I don't know that he's an ideal scheme fit for the Lions, to be honest with you. I think he just makes his money in half turn. I don't know how much Lions are going to want to lean into that going forward. I think it's an aspect they want to vary coverages, but I don't think that's something that they're going to like just lean into. Uh, but let me, okay, yeah, here, Austin Booker. So Austin Booker, six foot four, 240, arm length is outstanding. Stands out immediately, nearly 34-inch arms for a guy that's at set size is kind of unreal. Uh, testing scores were fine, 47940, for example, for his 40 time. Uh, but for me, what I loved, and this was like the big standout trade as a pass rusher, Chad, at the top of the pass rush, as my, as my, hey, as my camera goes down, I got to end off with this. What I do like is at the top of the pass rush, Chad, is his decisiveness that he brings. The decisiveness to me is key. I'm going to get my my, my uh, thing back on. I'm going to get it back on. But yeah, no, to me, the decisive... Oh, now I look kind of scary. Uh, all right, let's not do that. Uh, okay, let's go like this. Nope, let's not do that one. Let's go like this. There we go. No, but to me, I think it's it's the way that he's able to set up his rush. He's plays with so much discipline into the top of the pass rush. He could open up speed to power opportunity. And to me, there's a lot of variety in ways that he can win. And when you can open up that upside, there's a lot of there's a lot of edge rushers, bro, that are like you can are either you see the limitations, you don't see them open up certain parts of their pass rush ability. I don't see that with this player. I see him open up all different types of pass rush effectiveness, which is nice to see. And then obviously he has the close ability as well. So to me, I think when you look at measurables tied along with big time pass rush ability, he checks those boxes. Austin Booker was kind of an easy one, to be honest with you. Like, like this, this is one of those guys that could, we could walk away saying this is one of the best players in the draft. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think, I a test 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 that that based on where he's taken, he could have some of the most success. Like it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me because he he just checks too many darn boxes. So yeah, I felt pretty good about that. I loved my first three. I liked didn't love the fourth run because I'm just a little bit not sure if I love the 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 fit necessarily. Um, you know, the kicker was the kicker, and then Hunter again, just kind of one of the guys that I've seen. I'm still convinced to be okay to pass on O line on day one. I absolutely I didn't take O line in my first one, uh on day one. Uh, attack DB or D under DB. I think we can attack anything. I, I think we should be open to anything. It depends who's there. But as as wild as that is, like I was considering safety. I couldn't pull the trigger because I don't think Tyler Newbin is on that level. But he's a he takes the ball away a ton. But I th I think everything should be open. I really do. I don't think there's a tight end that pushes himself into round one territory. So I don't think you can really consider that. Quarterback's not going to be on the table. Wide receiver I think should be on the table. I think it should be. I think uh, depending on who it is, we shouldn't count it out. I just really like the mid range for uh, wide receivers. Now this mock would work really well if Josh Reynolds was back. Cause obviously they didn't draft a receiver. Haven't seen a receiver that I liked that late in the draft. So this would work a lot better if Josh is back. But if Josh is back, I think this is nasty. Detroit draft uh, Xavier Leggett. Yeah. I mean, look, I got issues with Xavier Leggett, like every player uh, for me, I think my biggest issues with Xavier Leggett. Um, I think it came back to pacing, to be honest with you, it was one of the biggest things there for me. Um, so I like him. I, again, I, I don't, I don't know. I didn't see him as a first round guy from the games that I've went through. I, I don't see him as that, by the way, I think you should check out Tennessee versus South Carolina. If you're a Leggett guy, cause I'm a Leggett fan too. Easy to be a fan of him, but I think you should watch him against uh Kamal Hayden. If you haven't seen him yet, just, just go see how he performed. Luke McCaffrey. I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him. Only thing I got on Luke McCaffrey is what he did to senior bowl. Um, Steeler and Eagle. I don't see him past Philly. Yeah, me neither. I don't know why he'd be here, but they just gave him to me. So I'm, I'm going to take him, but I don't know why he'd be here. I think he's a top 20. Like I say, he's the highest guy I've graded so far. We'd like to see the Lions big board draft team that has. We'd like to see the Lions big board draft team that draft team has that secret sauce. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. 
Uh, I do plan on doing like I like Cameron Kitchens. I like him. I don't think he's. I don't know if he's a. He might be a day two guy to me. I like Cameron Kitchens though. One of the safeties that I had watched faster than his bro watches highlights are awesome. Wait, who? Oh, Luke McCaffrey. Yeah, I haven't seen any Luke McCaffrey. Zach Zinter. I'm more of a Trevor Keegan guy, you know, from what I've seen so far. But uh, I understand that. I mean, those are all guys that the issue that you have, you're going to get limited athleticism with most of them. But you do have the aspect of there's usually good FBI that comes along with it. They're definitely going to be good in gap scheme. So there's that aspect. But for most of them, you kind of get limited athleticism. I just like and I think what we saw with last year when they drafted Colby Sorstel, I could be wrong. I think the Lions want a guy, if they're going to take someone, especially later in the draft, I think they're going to lean on a heavier athlete. Now, maybe that's not the case. Maybe this year they do go with like, hey, doesn't bring the athleticism, but he's a little bit more like higher floor. That way he could be a backup year one. Maybe they do that and I would understand it. But based on what I've seen them add to the room, I think they like real athleticism from their interior linemen to open up that zone scheme. Because while they do have principles of we're going to do all of it, you know, we'll do a lot, we'll do it all. But we do primarily lean into, based on last year, a lot of movement. Were you on Mikey Saver still? If you got to bounce, all good. No, I think it's a good question. Mike, Mike Saver still is, bro. So I was watching, uh, and I wasn't even watching for him. This is how you already know. When you, I had my uh, notes already done, and then I was watching him against uh, Washington, and I'm watching for the receiver, and I walk away, I'm like, yo, he's nasty. I mean, he's just so nasty. He looks like Brian Branch when he's out there, especially as a tackler. I like Mike Sainer still. The, the issue with him is going to be like, where do we put him? You know what I mean? Like, okay, he's he's a really darn good player. I just don't know that uh, he brings that wide flexibility. Some of my knocks, I don't know if I trust the, the flexibil flexibility to actually be there. I don't want to draft a backup to Brian Branch necessarily. And I think Branch is still going to take a majority of the snaps in the nickel. So I don't, or in the slot, I should say. So I don't really know. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't really know where that's going to go, but uh, I I think he's an awesome prospect. I think he doesn't get out of round two. I don't think he should. I mean, we saw Brian Branch start to fall last year, which seemed crazy, but I'm a big fan of him. If the Lions drafted Sainer still, I could easily talk myself into saying there's a way that they're going to make this thing work. <laughs> they're going to make this thing work somehow. What's up with Rad? Uh, we'll get him on at some point. It's just weird. Our schedules are kind of like lined up a little. It's It's weird scheduling he's got some things going on i got some things going on but we're gonna we're gonna figure that out we're gonna make it work we're gonna get rad back on here soon especially because the draft is getting kind of close so we have to do that i was trying to find my notes on mike saner still see this is my next thing i was gonna do i got my binder i got my sleeves i'm gonna start popping these into the sleeves so i can actually find stuff i got dude i got so many notes it's ridiculous but i i can't find anything okay here we go yeah mike saner still i need to watch more games i, I definitely need to watch more games um but yeah, I thought he, oh yeah, big time zone corner. So that'd be another thing. It's like from slot, you know, you could argue that we could work a little bit better. If the Lions are going to lean more man and they want to do that, don't know that that's like the best fit maybe. Um, but I loved him as a zone corner. Thought he was fine in off-man coverage. I just thought there was limitations. Didn't, uh, limitations specifically in terms of press, but his play speed is good. Run supports big time, smart cornerback. Like he doesn't have any bad grades for me. That's the thing. And then when you go to his ball skills, like he has some, well, I mean, how many interceptions? He had a ridiculous amount of interceptions. Like. Mike Sainer still really doesn't have bad grades when I'm looking at it. It's just like, okay, can we put him in? How, how are we going to fit him? That's that's That would be the only thing to me is like, if you're just like, if you're truly not worrying about how you fit him, love the dude. Um, okay. Doing mock now. Lasseter at 36. Foul, 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 I don't know how to say dude's name. I'm going to be, I don't know how to say dude's name. But I'm, I think he could be a guard. I think he could be a guard. Um, save those notes now, bro. <laughs> Yo, the, the, the notes are insane, man. I wish I could show y'all the visual right now of the what I went through to get that little paper from earlier today for the Green Bay game. It was such a mess. I was like, what am I doing looking for this? I found it, though. Like, I was hyped when I found it, but it was it was not worth it. It wasn't worth it. Uh, but, yeah, chat. So those are my two mocks that I made for this show. Easy did his live. Next Tuesday, it's Mock Tuesday. So he'll probably put another pull up, whether that's doing another Lions one. I love the Lions ones. Maybe we do another NFL one. Paint Wilson at 73. I I might be able to see a world where he gets there. I could see other players going ahead of him, depending on what you're looking for. I mean, if you want a guy that's going to stack and shed, you're not going to take Paint Wilson. If you want a guy that, and here's the thing, I was watching back the 2016 draft today, and you get a lot of, um, you had a lot of hybrids going day two, or I should say round two. You had a lot of like the safety linebacker hybrids. He's not that necessarily, but like the movement skills are so 
the 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 he's so good in terms of movement skills it's so easy for him to run sideline to sideline that it always feels like there's teams that just don't care if he's a freaky athlete we're gonna draft him they're not really and i i think the lions and this is kind of one thing that i'll put out there i don't know if it's true or not but this is kind of one thing that i take from it i think the lions when they look at drafting guys in a way they're looking at like position flexibility is great but like when i draft that player like what? Is, what is he elite at? Like what? Where is he great? Where does he separate himself? Like for example, like Jack Campbell was so darn unique at the linebacker position, but he's also, he's also like he's unique because he doesn't fit how all these other linebackers do. And you get so many linebackers kind of like your Peyton Wilson build. He's just unique. It like it like separates him. And I think the Lions get a lot of guys that are like that. Like if he was so unique at cornerback when he was available, Brian Branch. I mean, you could say that he was kind of unique just because of his age and how darn good he was. Like. The unique players feel like they're going to be lines wrapping. Like they're going to separate themselves in some category. You're going to be able to point to some and say he separates himself. Penny Sewell's ridiculous movement skills for an offensive tackle. Like it almost feels like most of the draft picks separate themselves in some way. Um, I guess when you get later, maybe they don't. I mean, even St. Brown, more of the off the field stuff. But it always feels like they have that. It always does. Um, Trotter at 102. Trotter out of Illinois. I wasn't a big Trotter guy. I wasn't a big Trotter guy, but he can cover. He can cover. He had a nasty pick six. I think it was against what Notre Dame where he jumped kind of a little out route, took it back to the house. So I wasn't as big on Trotter whatsoever. My grades were a lot more average across the board, but um, he, he just, he's just he got some tail there. Appreciate you, brother. Grace. Hey, I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Um, Fisk at 29. Yeah, intangibles. Intangibles. There you go. That's the right word. Um, Fisk at 20. I wouldn't take Fisk at 29. I wouldn't take him at 29. The Fisk thing is, again, more of a fit thing to me. Uh, but now you could say he's in you in some ways. Oh, Clemson. I'm sorry. Wait, who's the dude out of uh, Illinois? Who's the dude out of Illinois? Wait, is it? Oh, okay. No, it is Clemson. It is Clemson. I'm sorry. It is Clemson. Yeah, I just had the wrong school. You're right. Jeremiah Trotter. Yeah, I wasn't big on Jeremiah Trotter. All right. Same guy. Wrong school. Colors. Not good with colors. Uh, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't take Fisk at 29 from what I've seen so far. I think his biggest issue will be the fit thing. I've also seen games where he's gotten quiet. You know, that's been one thing that stood out too. Um, but for the most part, like he's, he's an animal. And he honestly surprised me because I was going into it like, oh man, there's going to be um, yeah, Newton. Well, Newton's a guy, again, I saw him go quiet in certain games. Uh, I think it was against LSU where I think he was, was it against LSU. I don't know. I have to double check my notes there. I think it was against LSU, but no, Newton did surprise me a little bit. Cause when I saw Newton's measurables, I was like, nah, this dude ain't gonna, you know, he ain't gonna be like that. And then he was like that. I was like, well, the flexibility's there. Let me check my notes before we get out of here. Let me check my notes. Let me see where I'm at. Cause this is one of those dudes that I feel like I can update along the way. Here we go. I got him right here. Look at that handy. Uh, yeah, big time first step. Good pass rusher. I have him uh, just about average as a in his play strength. Hand use is really good. Awesome. I, I have him as a great, great uh, at shedding blocks. Agilities, you know, a little bit more average to me. Foot, football intelligence is really good. Yeah. So that's the thing that surprised me. For six foot one, three oh four, he played a lot of that kind of like four eye type of role. Like he played a lot. He didn't really step inside guards very often he played a lot more outside of that here's the way that i think it could work and i was thinking about this with dj reader the way that you could make him work is if you if you put dj reader in a zero technique which at times he did or you know you just shade him and then you put a guy like this similarly to what we saw the cincinnati Bengals do you could put him opposite of a guy like pascal or you know whoever that might be and if you had five man fronts, I think he'd fit in really well. Personally, uh, four man fronts, you'd probably just put him at a three, you know, more so than anything. I don't think he brings as much as a nose tackle flexibility. But yeah, I really didn't have any bad grades necessarily. I just had some average. I thought his uh, run defense was a little bit closer to average, I guess here. But uh, good pass rusher. I had nothing. It didn't stand out. Good pass rusher though. But when you bring big time first step and ability to just get off of blocks, that helps. That helps. Uh, yo, what's up? So uh, to be honest, if you were sitting there and he was there at twenty nine, you probably could talk yourself into it. Absolutely. Yo, what's up? Haven't been on your channel in a while. Yeah, your offseason fits is my favorite. I appreciate you. Learn a lot uh, from new players and prospects. I appreciate it. I would have to put up a poll chat, like what y'all want to see. I definitely want to do some mock drafts, continue to do those, pump those out. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it because there's a lot of players that I watch, but I think me specifically doing like one player videos are kind of a waste of time because unless it's like a one like big name, you know what I mean? There's so many players. Like I'm, I'm just going to spend too much time on one guy and I'm not going to get to anybody else. So I'm trying to think if I want to do that or if I want to maybe do like list and I just kind of rank guys from what I've seen. And then I'm like, oh, here's my ranking. Then I update that. That's kind of how I was thinking about doing it, like through a big board. Root can play all along the defensive line. I would say I was definitely higher on Newton than I was on Rook. Um, 
let me see. Nose tackle, 6'1", 360, runs a five flat. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who this is. What is what position is that? You loaf Oshia? I don't know who that is. That name sounds familiar though. I feel like I've seen that somewhere. I don't know who that is though. Um, I was gonna see if I had my notes on Rude Candy. Yeah, I shouldn't be looking, bro. I gotta sort this out before next stream. That's the next thing I got. Oh, here we go. I actually did have it handy. Let's see. Ooh, I went through a solid amount of games here. Uh, first step. Oh, goodness. I have a really good first step there. Love this play strength against the run. Very good pass rusher. I thought his hand use was below average. Let he play with good balance. I thought his shed was below average. Uh, football intelligence was much lower, I think, than Newton there for me. Good motor, though. Um, average flexibility. So I would say with this one, what kind of stands out, and I'd have to look through these notes a little bit more, is probably the fact that a lot of the – you know, like, can he just play the run? Can he get after the passer? Does he have a good first? Like, he checks a lot of the the big the big check marks are there. For me, it was a little bit more of the smaller things that you could probably look at and say, like, okay, we can clean this up. Maybe that kind of thing. Um, let me see. Yeah. Strong foundation, wide base. Yeah, I mean, look, man. Six foot four, two ninety. It's, it feels undersized for our defensive line, but I mean, I got some good grades here. So, like you, if you can work on hand usage, if you can work on hand usage, man, maybe a position breakdown of what the Lions should do with the first round pick. Ooh, maybe a positional breakdown. How would that work? Like every receiver. See, that's where I feel like I should rank them. I feel like I should rank. Like I, even if I just did like okay, my top five receivers, bam, then that could work for. The thirty, um, the thirty or 29th pick, maybe something like that. Like how it to affect the rest of the draft picks. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. See now that 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 would make sense. That might be something I do a little closer to the draft though. When I get a bet, when I get through more players, I might I might do something like that though. Definitely closer to the draft because I like that idea. Um, oh, he's the linebacker from Washington. All right, bet. Hey, I've been on what? Hey, I've been watching a lot of Washington these last couple of days, so I'm on board with it. I'm on board with it. Rams going to draft Newton. That's what I think, too. It makes sense. Hey, we had that in our first mock, so you on board with that. You had to like the mock. A lot of people weren't feeling it, but you had to like it. Uh, Miles Cole and Josh Proctor. Yeah, Proctor Proctor just played a ton in college. I haven't really watched him, but that feels like a that feels like not a bad late-round pick. And then Miles Cole. I don't think I know anything about Miles Cole. Oh, he had a freaky RAS score. All right, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, I'm going to check him out. I'm going to check him out. That's good to know because a lot of late round guys, I don't know who to look at. So that's a good one. I'll check that one out. Hey, go check out my guy, though. Check out check out John, John Trey Hunter. John Trey Hunter. I don't know how you say his name. Anyway, chat. All right, I appreciate y'all joining, man, for this mock draft episode. We're going to end it right here tomorrow. Ooh, we'll see. I plan on doing something tomorrow. Maybe it's another live. Maybe it's like a video. Max Melton. Yeah, I got to watch more of Max. I had him a little bit lower for me. Well, guys, it just depends on where you have him at. So I don't want to say I have him lower. What happened to the chat drafts? Maybe a draft 30. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, these are going to come back. No, no, these are going to come back. I definitely want to get Rad in on these for sure, too. These will come back. Maybe this is something that we'll start throwing to, um, like, after we do our mocks. Maybe we'll do these. And then we can kind of, like, give them a quick grade. These will these will happen. Uh, we're still in March, but I'm telling you, as soon as April hits, it's it's. I mean, from now on, it's pretty much all draft stuff. So those will happen, no question. And those will probably be live streams. But yeah, tomorrow I don't know. I hopefully I'll get something out tomorrow. Maybe I'll do a little ranking thing. Maybe I'll do a mock. Maybe I'll just post another mock tomorrow. Maybe we'll do some live. I plan on going live though Thursdays for sure. So we'll see on tomorrow. I got I got to do dang homework tomorrow for sure. Uh, but I want to do something. Uh, but I'm going to check out some of the dudes y'all brought up today, especially the guys that Easy went through. No, no, the ideas are good. Those are going to come back, especially the guys that Easy brought up. Like Johnny Wilson, I got to watch more. I'm going to watch more Max Bell, and y'all are feeling him, so I got to watch more later. Though. Hey, I appreciate y'all joining, man. Um, yeah, I guess I'll leave it there. Stay tuned. I guess maybe we'll do – hey, go to the community tab and let me know. All right, I'm going to I'm gonna put a poll up probably here soon on what y'all want to see, like on how – like should I put them like on the website? Should I do like a ranking video? Like how, how y'all want to see that? But because they're all going to be in my notebook once I start sorting these things out. But y'all won't be able to see it. Oh, yeah, Renardo. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Florida State. Got to watch all Florida State. All right. We out, man. Have a great night. I'll see y'all again soon.